apologies, apologies. You can always blame me for things. Um, a little bit of a mix up on the start time off the hop there. I like to do the Friday ones at two instead of three. And I set it up last night or whatever, and then forgot to change the time once Nez and I talked this morning and ironed some things out. But we're here nonetheless. And it's a great Friday. It is a great Friday to be a gladiator on the platform of the people. They have added best ball rake back, which is incredible. I mean, everyone had been clamoring for it once they saw that they had the gladiator program for the daily contest and now being rewarded in a great way uh, for the best ball bros. So love to see it. And I will bring, oh, I clicked the wrong one. My badness. I'm on top of my game right now. I'll bring it up right here. For those who didn't see, uh, Underdog Drafts account tweeted it out. The main account retweeted it there. And uh, I know people have varying uh, definitions of like what rake back is. This is this is rake back on rake paid. So 10% of like not your total draft buy-in, but the fee in which it's associated with buy-in. So you, right. you know, you're 10% back on a, on a $25 BBM you get it back on the rake in which is paid on that one. So yep. whatever. Yeah. 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 It's definitely, you know, people watching this and uh, you know, people in our discord definitely understand what rake back means and like how to do the calculations. I can understand like for people that aren't too familiar with rake or even know that they pay rake when they enter contests, like not knowing uh, w what it is so some good uh, explanations I saw some people wondering like this is cool but like what does it mean um, right so yeah. I'm excited as somebody that plays all the sports um, you know very excited about this and I mean I don't know for certain but you know it says end of the period 429 I think that's like pretty arbitrary I don't know when the NFL draft is but I'd imagine like that is the end of like one major period where another major period uh, begins shortly after would be would be my guess. I wouldn't anticipate this being like a one-time thing. Right. No, I, I fully agree with you there. The NFL draft is that weekend. So the NFL draft takes place Makes from the twenty fifth to the twenty seventh, something like that. Yeah. And then that Monday will be the the cutoff point. And then I, I imagine this is kind of like trial run, see what works, see if the price point's right, see if the, the structure is good. And then as BBM drops, kind of, okay, we're going to run this back or we're going to make some amendments or whatever. That's how I read into the situation. Yeah, because it might even be hard to um, get to 250 after this period too. So they, they'll probably have to tweak some things, you know, play it by ear, understand. Well, actually, I lied. There's going to be so many no, basketball contests. <laughs> yeah, it'd be easier to get to 250. I did 500 right? drafts last year and it's going to be a bigger best ball season. So let me just promptly shove my foot in my mouth i <laughs> uh, love it uh but just you know evergreen man continued growth continued strives to uh to value the draft game users to value yeah. the best ball users it's and, and it's i love that they awesome. backdated this too i mean i know that mm -hmm. they like it they kind of like slightly missed the beginning of the dinger but it was due to the nfl like playoff best ball i believe it's like when those right. contests yeah. were going on but the, the fact that they backdated it at all i think is uh you know salute they didn't have to do that so yeah, for sure. So this will definitely apply to um, Zamboni, dance, uh, all the baseball contests, yep. and the big board. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's incredible. Love it. Um, Des, man, Hoop Streets last night, you were doing some work. Your boy Wemby here has uh, has been doing some work for you. You came, came fourth last night in the Hoop Streets. Uh, I was only in the main contest, but I did see that N3S took down another one uh, there I yeah, saw really. our guy. I, yeah, I think it was the three dollar. Um, I saw our guy Cowboys take down uh, the the dad, the uh, Dunkin' After Dark one, and or and then um, uh, oh, an OG from the NFL streets, uh, DMC seventy two took yeah. down the main contest ahead of you. Chad G had two lineups ahead of you in that one, but big shouts to you and big shouts to the community there as mentioned. Yeah, thanks, man. It's been a very fun post All Star break. Uh, things mm -hmm. have, things have been running running pretty pure. Uh, if you if you haven't become a member, I would become a member. Uh, the mm -hmm. The morning slate, uh, you know, chat and I, we were all we were dialed in. We we were all over. We were 
Wemby 101, like absolutely no questions asked, had Vassal ahead of ADP, called – I said, I mean, it's not a sage take to say Josh Hart's going to play a lot of minutes, but Josh Hart literally – there was 50 seconds of that game that Josh Hart did not play last yeah, night. He like, played all the overlap ball handling stuff. He – like 50 seconds off of – Oh, off the court, insane. Uh, so like we we were just, we were just on on a lot of these plays. So yeah, you were you on know. the Paolo stuff too. Your three highest owned players were uh, Wemby, Paolo, and Vassal, right? Yeah, I mean we've talked about it before. You have to be so insanely right to have, at least in my experience, to have a shot at these things. Like you have to crush and then some. So I had a good feeling like early in the slate. Like oh man. I think we might have a good night. Like once uh, I saw Giannis like slow down, I was like, okay, like we, we might be able to to have something going here. Uh, of course, I, I I preached the consistency with Mikhail and uh, my lowest my lowest scoring player here. I don't think Vassal was on the board here. If he was, and I took Mikhail, no. I would yeah uh, yeah I'd be very sad. Nice. Um, as you guys can see, I was in the opposite end of the camp, took an absolute bath on 110 entries and got 68 bucks back because I did the, I did not watch the morning show there. Nez. Mm. I woke up on my West coast time. I actually messaged you and said, are you going to run a solo today or should <laughs> I did. do it? And you said, I've already ran it. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> that was put that in square brackets. I did not. I'm, I'm nice to you in the mornings. That's true. In the mornings. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, so I missed the the morning show with the draft gang who would have taken full advantage of uh, this sweet, sweet information here. Oh, there's our guy Chip there in seventh as well. So big shouts there, part of the morning the morning crew as well. Uh, and I, I promptly uh, took SGA and Giannis over Wemby for, for 110 iterations. So <laughs> there was that. Uh, I, I did a lot of SGA over Giannis too, which I was like really worried. It's like, oh man, this might be dumb. But I thought SGA would have had a bigger night, to be honest. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought he was going to torch, torch the uh, the Spurs. I was taking him one on one, and it was because I, I, I mean, we know that Bigs cook against the Spurs, but I really liked the matchup for SGA just in general. And then the fact that that game was a closer total with a higher total than the Giannis one. We had just seen the Giannis iteration versus the Hornets, and he effectively did the exact same thing. Yes. Where he played like 26 minutes. They cook the doors off that, you know, that team That team can't break 100 points right now. We'll talk about that when we get to them on today's slate, but they haven't broken 100 points in four straight games. So how are you going to keep a game versus Giannis, Dame, and whatever close, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And close enough for them to matter. So I, I was in the same camp, but I should have taken it one step further with you guys and Gone with that Wemby 101 there. Yeah, running run, 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 run pretty hot right now. I mean, you know, it, 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 we'll, we'll take it. We'll, we'll take it. But, you know, th that this is a slate where, you know, you really needed that that top three pick, uh, you know. Yeah. So it was it was helpful to to have that, that leverage. It, it, it's not going to work every time, but mm -hmm. it's fun when it does. Yeah, I was talking a little bit with you behind closed doors, and I said some things in the Discord yesterday that I really think context of the slate matters when we decide to shorten them. And I was not thrilled that we went to a six gamer yesterday instead of eight. Like I thought eight was the perfect number. And the reason I, I was saying to you was that it really did shorten the slate in terms of like there were three outliers at the very top there. And then when you take when you take AD, LeBron, and Joker off, it's really hard to balance a draft board. Right. And that that can be a little bit results oriented, but it's really it's really hard to balance a draft board out that this slate would have played so much nicer, in my opinion, if we had had AD uh, and LeBron and Joker to yeah. balance out the first round, because the ceiling of of these upper echelon guys in hoops in such a projectable sport, it's just astronomical some nights. And, and we're low key going to deal that with that again tonight with the Luca situation. We are. Luca is like totally OP today, but thankfully we have, in my opinion, some balancing here. Uh, not mm -hmm. a lot, but some uh, in Tatum. You know, if you get if you get Tatum, I think Tatum has the ability to match Luke. That, this game is just going to be so sick. Uh, yeah, I'm pumped for Boston. And even even if you miss on Tatum, you know, targeting uh, Porzingis and uh, Jalen Brown. If you miss on Tatum, 
I, I think is like a nice way to get ceiling. Someone on this, someone on Boston is going to put up like 50. Uh, mm-hmm. It could be, could be two more than more than one guy. Um, and then, and then low key, man, uh, Steph Curry can, can probably have himself a damn game too. I mean, it's, these are the, just like the Nez charts, you know, I just, I, a team, <laughs> but when certain teams are on the slates, like, and the, and, and the planets align, like I'm going for them. Mm-hmm. Steph tonight, I think can, can give us vintage, vintage Steph tonight. So I'm really excited about where he's going. Um, but okay. otherwise it's hard to, it, the point stands though, like on, on a slate like this. Yeah. Like I love that we're experimenting. I love the, the easier sweat. Um, I think subjectivity in the future w- would probably go a long way, but, but I, but I like that we're experimenting, you know, everybody's yeah. experimenting across the, the industry right now with NBA. Yeah. I, I think it, I think it, it makes a lot of sense in on certain slates. I didn't think <clears throat> last night was one of those ones this is kind of all I was getting at. Like yeah, I love, yeah. I love the thought of having a bigger dad contest, like these nine K entry ones, but nine K entry to two games is low key floating flirting with like the primetime Palooza territory that we tried to get away from in NFL, right? Where it was like, what did you need last night? Well, you were just searching for that LeBron Q tag fall for the 80 LeBron GM GM. And that's all that mattered. Right. And I think that's yeah. what we want to get away from. Uh, agreed. Yeah. That, that can be a little problematic personally. Like, you know, I, I did play that, but I didn't play a lot of, <laughs> of the dad stuff because I was, you know, I got to ask myself, am I going to be pissed off when I see the winning lineup and it's not me? Right. And and, right. <laughs> and it was, I wasn't pissed off yesterday. I mean, I knew it was going to happen as soon as, cause LeBron at one point was game time decision, right? Didn't he get it down? Oh yeah. He had no, they, he was uncertain to play both him and Jamal That's had right. uncertain to play tags like early in the day before the reports even came out. And then he went Q tag. Then he went probable. Then he went. Yeah. 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 I mean, that was, yeah, a little unfortunate, but you know, I, I like that. I like that we're experimenting. Yeah, for sure. I, I, yeah, and it's it, it's good. I mean, we just don't have a late swap problem here. That's kind of like my thing. Is like we don't have a late swap problem. So yeah, like, just a, just a staying. Yeah, yeah, just just yeah. like a late a, a late sweat thing. And um, yeah. yeah, once you get past eight games, then I think it can it can make more sense. But you know, I <laughs> I, I got faith. I got faith. You know, it's it's, it's oh, a for learning, sure. learning thing. Yeah. And when the, when we can stretch like the Monday slate made a lot of sense when we could stretch the, or was it Tuesday where we could stretch the dad to be a four gamer. That's when it makes the most sense. Oh yeah. Four, three, three or four games for the, for the dads are, are where it's at. Yeah. Love it. Um, let's, uh, let's dive into this slate. I've done 25 drafts thus far and I I don't know, maybe I'm overconfident. Maybe I got blinders on here. Nez, uh, this one feels like, the most I'll use wrong in parentheses, but that's probably the wrong word. Uh, the most wrong ADP has felt to me in a minute, but I think that's because it's a fun slate to draft <laughs> because all the Q tags will move the values of basically 20 pieces on this slate. Yeah. It, 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 there's a lot of Q like Q tags that we're waiting for. Uh, but I, I totally agree. I don't know if it's just, you know, a little bit of overconfidence because I'm having some good, a, a good week. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I totally agree. Uh, for me, like it starts with Tyrese Maxey. And where would you rank Tyrese Maxey today? I, okay. So I'm probably the wrong one to ask if you want to move them okay. because I really like Maxey today. Okay. Yeah. So I'm on kind of on the opposite side of that one. I like Maxi. The models won't like Maxi as much as the models like uh, Barnes and uh, Donovan Mitchell if he plays and Ant if he plays, which I think Ant plays for the record, just plays through the Q tag kind of Agreed. thing. Agreed. Um, but I low key, I like Maxi, man. They have nobody and they have no other scoring and they're going to be missing, most likely missing Kelly Oubre as well, which just, I mean, there's they need to win and they need. They need 42 minutes out of Maxi tonight in a matchup where he should just cook uh, Cody Martin. See, I, I, there's just, there, there, like Ant against the Kings, just mm-hmm. God, it feels so, so good. Scotty against yeah. the Warriors feels so good. And I, I hear you on, on the Maxi thing. So maybe I won't like right now. It's like, I'm, I, there's just no chance I'm getting, getting Maxi today. Uh, my pivot what I'm doing instead 
um, because I agree with what you're saying about like the lack of depth there is I am doing a lot of Tobias Harris and, and, okay. and going that route. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, maybe, maybe I won't do the full fade thing, but as of right now, it's a, it's a full fade. I haven't done a lot of drafts either. I'm like eight drafts in, but uh, I know who I like. I got 25% maxi through 24. This I just think it hasn't updated. It's 25 drafts now, unless one got tossed. And then Tobias, I'm kind of like with you as like, is this finally the bounce back Tobias spot? Because he's played very poorly since the all-star break, but he feels like a decent click in the sixth round. Yeah. One thing that like I've been doing lately, as far as like my process and like, I don't know, maybe this is like common sense, man, but Mm -hmm. try not to like lose sight of like a player's real ceiling, a player's real ceiling. Like Tobias Harris has shown us 50 balls before, you know, like this is, that is something that is in his bag. And when, when it's not showing up in the recent box scores and the recent box scores are below, like what his median probably is, it just mm-hmm. feels like a pretty strong opportunity to try to like buy a, you know, a bit of a bounce. You know, I, I don't want to reduce this to like he's due, but like, <laughs> might, but, might, might be due, but he's, man. But he's due. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's kind of due. I can't wait to get to he's due uh, middle of July baseball season. Oh, like, buddy. Hey, you know, he's a lefty killer and he's yeah. over his last 25. But he's <laughs> due. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I know. I, I, I like that shout for sure. I, they, okay, let's play a little anecdotal game. Let's pretend his last two times out, he had 35 and, and 40 balls. Let's, let's, let's say he kind of like was around his, his mean output there. He put up, you know, 25 and eight as Tobias is, or I guess eight and five as Tobias is like prone to do now and then. Where would he be going on today's slate? knowing you know kelly Oubre already well he's not officially out right it was a doubtful tag um uh it's still q but it was a late q okay. it's the now okay. questionable yeah okay so the the Oubre q the the kj mitch uh, um martin q and the melton out tag so where would you be putting tobias versus hornets probably like uh by where, sorry where would adp be putting him Right, like by Emmanuel quickly. Right. Okay. So you know, ten spots higher if we had had like the recent stuff. Right. Right. I I, I think so, especially given this matchup and and the and the injuries. Um, I haven't been in enough drafts to know like where the real ADP is, but I'm guessing he's a six rounder. Yeah, that's more or less a six rounder. I've seen him go undrafted once or twice, but that's about it. Hmm. Uh, some okay. other some other guys that I just think are also like really mispriced. Um, mm-hmm. uh, dang it, I just lost this. Sorry, go go let's, ahead. I, I, I lo- I'm, okay, let's let's talk about the front end of the draft board before we talk about like some of the fully mispriced guys because there's a lot of moving the a lot of moving pieces because like if Ant plays and plays through the Q tag, we talked about how he got like lifted off the court, but then still came back into that game, and then I thought he was going to sit the last game and then he's ant so he plays through everything and he's such a badass so he's going to play through this q tag again tonight is kind of everyone's assumption correct it's my assumption okay yeah i'm i'm in lockstep with you there so if if ant plays and luca plays like my knee jerk reaction is kyrie's not in a good spot despite it being you know one of his amazing or one of his three or four whatever revenge games that he plays <laughs> um like Kyrie's artificially thrust up because of the Luca one. It's not a good, it's not a good matchup for Kyrie, right? So I think his ADP is wrong. And then I think Kat's ADP is artificially thrust up because of uh Ant right now <clears throat> with the Q tag. I would not take Kat where he goes there. Are we in lockstep? Um I don't think I don't think Kyrie is like uh the the worst pick right now, uh personally. Kyrie has Kyrie's got a ceiling, uh, but yeah. I like I, I take Steph over him. Like I'm gonna have a lot of Steph tonight. Um, okay, you take Steph over Hallie. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, That's Hallie, perfect. man. I'm. I'm. Halliburton is like in. Oh, I know Nest. <laughs> he he's in like he's in he's in a special category right now where <laughs> you know he can he's he's you know what he is he's the Gordon Ramsay meme where. 
you know, we have, you know, he, you have the one like child chef that's like, and he's like, Oh, it's okay, darling. Like, come here. Like you're such a good cook. That's uh-huh. Tyrese Halliburton. And then there's Mikel Bridges where it's like, you fucking donkey. Like, and then they just like yelling at him. Cause like Ty- Tyrese Halliburton just gets a pass from, from everybody, but his, um, the usage and, and like what he's doing from a fantasy standpoint and like what the Pacers are doing mm-hmm. is just like not super conducive. And, and, and I love when the Pelicans are on the slate, but I don't really think that the him versus the Pelicans is some like slam dunk. I don't know. Oh. No, especially when he's going to get the herb treatment. And we just saw this matchup happen earlier. Like, was it last game or two games ago? We just saw this matchup and Herb mm-hmm. put him in lockdown and he can't get a shot off, man. The guy creates well and facilitates well, but it's because the ball is out of his hand so effing quick. Like he just, he doesn't go to the paint. He's infuriating to watch, man. And I don't know if it's the shooting motion and the lack of drive to the hoop. <laughs> I just think he's a fugazi, man. And we got caught in it uh, early like uh, this season. But uh, oh, Towers in the chat with this big narrative here. His birthday was the leap year birthday. He oh, a he's year a leap baby. day baby. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Actually, I was listening. I don't know yeah. who I was listening to yesterday before Locke there, but uh, someone said that he used to say, they, they asked him, a reporter asked him when he celebrates his birthday, whether it's the 28th or the 1st. And then he's like, when he was younger, he said such and such a day, but now I celebrate both because I'm rich. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, yo, I low-key like Hallie again. <laughs> Hall Burton, man, I, I don't even want to know what he was what he was uh, what he was rocking on his birthday because he's got the worst fashion sense of all time. I don't know if you've seen some of the shit that he's worn. No, not really. Oh no. my god, dude! There was one jacket he wore that they described him he that as like the czar of like a country that was um, ran by like the Cookie Monster. It was uh-huh. like a suit jacket, and they just had like two blue fur patches on the biceps. <laughs> <laughs> like, like wrapped around it was the strangest and then he's on the court when he's not playing and he looks like he's like a peaky blinders extra oh yeah he does i i've noticed that one and i've noticed the hipster glasses like he wears like the big round uh lenses ones on the on the bench too i don't even think he needs glasses he, guy like him he's had laser for sure he needs <laughs> he needs a stylist uh one here's a narrative for him you, and though. kuzma him and kyle kuzma man those are the those are the two guys who get away with murder in terms of their their outfits yeah. Uh, here's a narrative, though, and part okay. of why, like, the Pelican. I mean, the Pelicans are so mispriced today. So mispriced. They should yeah, be. Zion's we, my most exposed right now. We should be taking these guys way sooner. And thankfully, the last time they played the Pacers, it wasn't, like, their best game. But it's because they got no sleep that night. They got to right. the hotel at 5 in the morning before that Pacers game. And everyone's, like, game time decision with, with sleepiness. And mm-hmm. now we get them back. And they're that, at home against the Pacers. This is this game's gonna be so sick. Yeah, that was the day I did the solo stream, and I was like, "Yo, these guys aren't playing. It's their fifth and seven nights." Uh, yeah, it was their fifth game in seven nights. They had the terrible travel. They had the Q tag on one guy the night before. Whatever. They always have the Q tags on some combination of like Bi, Cj, and and Zion. And then tonight is like the first night we've seen like no no Q tags. Uh, the other thing, the other reason why I really like Zion tonight is I think they'll play small again. Like they played small last time um, versus Indy because they want to run and Joe Val isn't set up for a matchup to run, right? So I think they'll play small and they'll do some more like they've been doing a lot of the points Zion and the assist rate has creeped up. But like I think they'll do some combination of like Zion at the five on you know the offensive end or like, you know, he's a he's a five in quotations, but still gets some ball handling and they just keep you know, Nance and, um, and Joe Val on the bench. So yeah, I've been pushing up Zion. We put uh zinger on the cover uh, over Zion because you told me, you told me zinger and I'm not going against the Nez model right now, but I mm-hmm. think I would have put Zion on there because I've been taking Zion over zinger thus far today. Yeah. I needed, I needed to mix it up a little bit, you know, Z- I mean, okay. I, the, the X team against the Pacers, let alone, the Pelicans is just like it's that's that's too easy. We gotta like throw them off course. Like, you know, I think I think the 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 uh the, the betting odds favorite was Zion to be on the cover, given what they know mm-hmm. about this show. So I had to throw them for a loop and give them the next best like thing, it. which is okay, Zinger's really bench game against um my my Mavericks as well. Mm, okay. My Mavericks. Yeah, Zinger revenge game against a team that gets cooked by centers. Feels good. 
feels very good. Yeah, preferred if we had a Q tag on someone on the Boston side. Um, but yeah, like be, did, okay, let's talk about that game, like just in general, because you seem to really like it. You like the flow chart. You're really comfortable with the ADPs of those guys. Um, and and I was a little more apprehensive. Are you scared at all that like we have full strength in quotations if Luca goes uh, from the Mavs, and I think Luca goes tonight, but we have uh, and it's nationally televised. Uh, we have full strength Dallas and Boston still 11 and a half point favorites at home. No, not really. I, I, cause I think it'll be close. Um, like, and honestly, I would take, I would take the Dallas side of that. I'd probably go, I'd probably go Dallas side on that. I mean, it's nine now. Okay. I was not 11. It's like nine now. Yeah, that that seems way more way more appropriate. Like the Celtics are so sick, and I would I would love to see like what their team total is is what right now. Uh, one thirteen for Dallas and one twenty three for the Celts. Yeah, it's that's the thing is like they they're they're just gonna score at will on, on the Mavericks. But the Ma- the Mavericks are I I like the way they're set up right now, man. I don't know if you know. If the if the models and 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 everybody else has, has caught up to it. it, it really does feel right now like the models, betting markets are just really not up to speed with a lot of these teams right now. Maybe this is just me getting lucky, but like I swear, man, there's just been some really big misses. Like that Mavs Raptors game was so obviously, so obviously going to explode. And it wasn't even a 240 total. Kyrie was at like 26 and a half points for his projection. Like that just like didn't make sense to me. So I, I lo- like I, I just think this game is going to be a frenzy. Okay. Yeah. Amac agreeing with you in the chat here that the Celts just match up so well against the Mavs. Oh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. That does feel right. Um, ooh. T Bear saying that, that uh, Boston's not the best team in the league, they're paper tigers. Chip says they're the best team in the league. <laughs> That's the least controversial T Bear statement. I swear to God, this dude just comes in, <laughs> just guns blazing every show. Nick coming for your head right now that Nez is outsmarted Vegas. <laughs> I understand it's a little uh, the hu- I, 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 let, let me when, when the hubris comes, you got to embrace it. <laughs> um, I love it. Let's let's talk about some other uh, controversial ADPs or ADPs that we we don't agree with or whatever, kind of in this middle range. And I'll start with Cade, man. Um, Cade with the soft minutes limit that's not a soft minutes limit that sometimes he plays higher than. I have no idea what's going on with Cade. Uh, But let me just fall back on the words of our good friend Sam Olson on Mount Rushmore. Never Cade. How do you feel about this one, Nez? Uh, He he feels overpriced because of the fact that, like, I'm looking at Zinger, Zion, Jalen Brown, <laughs> Siakam, Ingram, and like, why would I take those guys behind Cade against against the Cavs? It, that agree. just that just doesn't that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, mm-hmm. But Cade Cade's playing well, so mm-hmm. this could be. You know, I, I don't want to play both sides here. Like I'm, like I said, I, I truthfully am not getting to a lot of Cade. However, Cade is playing really good basketball. And he's sort of is borderline matchup proof because he's all that they kind of have. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's true. I mean, like they give some ball handling to like like Ivy back in the day or like Killian Hayes when he was there. Like they do that sort of stuff. And like we just haven't seen a ton of that anymore. It's literally just him and Duran. And then yeah, and, uh, and the guards just match up a little better than than the bigs against the cast, too. And hmm. does it is it a good thing if if. Donovan Mitchell sits. I don't know these things. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, because like our traditional mindset is like Mitchell plus Garland are good guard defenders, right? Like that's our tradition. I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, like the Cavs just play good team defense. I don't know if it's just like right. the Mobley yeah, effect, slow. you know, like, yeah, and, and slow. Yeah. 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 They got cooked in terms of uh, boards last game by the double big lineup of Chicago, but that game also did go to double overtime. So I wouldn't be reading too heavily into box scores from them when you see like big minutes and stuff attached to the Cleveland side. Okay, let's talk about Cleveland for a second. Do you think uh, Donovan Mitchell lets, uh, lets us know tonight? Mm. 
I kind of do. Okay. And and here is where what I'm doing is I am going to draft him because I really like the matchup. I think he has a chance to really hit a ceiling game. And if he doesn't play here, I am, you know, crossing my fingers that Karis LeVert plays. Because if okay. Karis LeVert is in, Donovan Mitchell's out, that should be a very easy, clean swap if that's the case. Now, if LeVert and he doesn't smashed play, last game too. LeVert smashed last game. I okay. I think the nature of the energy injury for Levert is he's not going to play. I'm worried about it. Yeah, like he was icing up, and uh, I read a, a G League move that they did. I can't remember the guy's name right now. Uh, not not Sam Morrell, The other the other guard. Fuck. How many how many over. moves? Just one. Just one. Hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like it sounds like I'm still alive. Either either well, spider plays or yeah, <laughs> yeah someone's yeah, yeah. sitting. <laughs> someone for for one of them. Um, shit, can't remember the guy's name right now. I'll go find the tweet after. And then if it's not them, then uh, you know maybe I can get Garland. But Garland gets drafted sometimes. Yeah, I mean he's still readily available for swaps too. There, there you go. Chips got me. Oh, Craig Porter Jr.'s Craig back. Craig Porter Jr. Oh, yeah. well, there's your swap. Yeah, Craig I'm- Porter Jr. himself. Get a seven game slate with some better spots than Craig Porter Jr. But y'all, y'all are going to respect Craig Porter Jr. one way or another, man. This dude is, a, <laughs> he needs to be I mean, on a I'll team. He is, he's the new IQ that's like free Craig Porter and let him cook. <laughs> put him on the, put him, put him, put him on the, on the, on the, on the goddamn pistons. Yeah, let this that's right. cook. <laughs> uh, big, uh, big shouts here. Um, am I, okay. I read it as a Mac, but then there's a D, so it's like a Mac D one two three. I don't know. A Mac, let me know how to pronounce your name. But thanks for joining one, up there. Two, three. And then uh, Kevin McCarthy, thank you for joining up. Appreciate you guys becoming members. And there was just one more in the chat there. Uh, Billy Jones, our guy, uh, asking if we've dipped our toes in the playoff stuff. Well, if you join up and become a member like these guys. Uh, I dipped my toes in the dance on Tuesday, I believe. Or was it Wednesday? Wednesday after we did the show with Pete on Off and on the Clock. The members only, badges only uh, did it there. Yeah, I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Um, All right, back to the slate itself. There's Daniel. Um, This next little kind of like, tier in general i could see getting to a nice matchup for siakam especially if the herb focus goes um to hallie there uh i could see clicking on his name a good amount in this range but i low-key like jeremy grant without uh eight and tonight um also you do yeah also missing uh, a little uptick in the board stuff it's a gross game but no jjj on the other side uh like this Memphis Portland game is a dumpster fire. It's so gross. The total is so low. I think it's like 210. Both are at like 103 and 104. Uh, this game could be awful and disgusting, but someone's going to pop from this game for us. And I think I would rank it. Hold on one second. Sorry. Um, I, I, I think I would rank it Simon's first, Grant second. Vince Williams, third. Goodwin, fourth. No, Gigi Jackson over Goodwin, then Goodwin. What do you think about that? I think it doesn't matter because they shouldn't <laughs> get to any of these fucking guys. Like, you don't want to touch this game. I, we're, we're, we're Jeremy, Jeremy Grant goes, there's, there's no way I'm getting to Grant today. How am I going to click Mobley? How am I going to click Grant over Mobley over Gobert? No, no, yeah, no shot. Fair. No shot. Okay. Um, Simon's like Simon's. I think it makes makes a little more sense in my eyes. Okay. Grant just Grant Grant belongs like behind quickly behind Purtle. Okay. No, thank you. Yeah, the Purtle one's interesting. Uh, don't love the spot for him versus the Warriors, but I. Do love the fact that if Kelly O's out, we might get old school 
hurdle of like the 32 minute variety instead of this like split 24 24 stuff yeah what's the latest with olenic there not on uh, that was there's not there's no news blurb there but i mean dude he played against the 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 mavs and like didn't even get to 20 minutes um who, who didn't elio mm -hmm. yeah it's more just that they split the rotation I mean, uh, Pirtle's cooked two games in a row. He came out with the ankle injury, and then he had the Q tag last game, and then he cooked. Yeah, so the the 21 against Indy, he came out with the ankle. But, like, my point is more that, like, we haven't seen him touch that, like, 30 echelon that he was touching routinely when it was, like, um, Thaddeus Young behind him and... Chris Boucher and like those guys like now that they have a legit backup five his minutes have been like his rates are nice and like he's obviously cooking but like that's all on kind of like the backs of stocks in in more limited minutes I don't know I don't I don't love it that much some good alpha there from Christopher in the chat what you got per well he I'm, I'm this is the tweet that he's referencing this is per Anthony Slater who covers the Warriors uh, for the athletic the Warriors' plane was delayed getting out of New York, I'm told. They didn't take off until 5, didn't land and get into their hotel until after 7 this morning. Yeah, it's, it's basically the exact same situation as the Pels game right. was last time because this is their sixth game in nine nights, and they're really scratching and clawing for that like Western Conference too. Sounds, like bullish, for, sounds bullish for the Raps. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So, yeah, I, I hear you. I, Ooh, per, I like Pirtle when he's a six-round pick. And they have more. Boston on Sunday. Oh, Jesus. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a little third-person reference to himself drafting. Yeah. Per, Pirtle's, <laughs> Pirtle's probably being drafted. At, not not. I wouldn't necessarily say his ceiling, but definitely an expensive pick right now. Granted that he's coming off a <laughs> six-stop game, which is, like, no doubt boosting his value. Like, that's not going right. to happen again. Yeah. I mean, it could, but, you know. Um, okay, question for you. The Jared Allen and the Mobley picks right now, uh, are they palatable where they are? Do you flip the two? Or do you see pushing them up if we get the Donovan Mitchell sit? Like if if Mitchell sits out this game as as you know, we open our third eye, like let's say Levert and Mitchell sit, where are their new ADPs? Like where are them in Garland? Like where's a spot that we can get ahead of here? I don't know how much more you can push up Evan Mobley, really. Okay. If you want to, like, then I'll then then I'm gonna zag. But okay. Garland, I think, becomes like a like an every time six round pick. But the sixth falls off a cliff after like the third pick in the sixth round. It just falls off an absolute cliff. Like you, it's gonna be kind of. It could be really tilting where. Let's say Luca nukes and somebody lets CJ McCollum fall to the Luca drafter. Like that shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. It is happening. It. And that, that could like easily the, be the winning game. combo. Like okay. it shouldn't happen, but it's going to. Okay. Not not saying that CJ that's... go a couple times. Because I like some of the other guys. For, yeah. for uh, uh, who, who are you taking uh, over, over CJ tonight? Tobias, Garland, Brandon Miller. I took Goodwin once or twice. Uh, that's about it. Aldama's not crazy. Yeah. That's I do one. like Vince Williams, though, for yep. in that Memphis game. I'll give you Vince Williams. Okay. I'm glad I can have one. <laughs> I, you know me man i just fall for this trash you know i still got a little bit of redacted brain in me when it comes to drafting well you got thing. redacted brain all right buddy <laughs> <laughs> i'm not to, i'm not <laughs> talking the fantasy <laughs> well i still got like a little like sick in me that like you have to play these shit plays to get to the best plays on the slate and that's just like not true sometimes on underdog where where i'm 
having success is picking my spots in the first four rounds and then mixing up after that. And, you know, okay. living and dying with those takes have been enjoyable and profitable. Yep. Like it. Um, okay. Let's talk about, okay. Let's talk about Jalen Duran. obviously not a good matchup against the towers, but we just saw Drummond do work on them. And we've been known to call uh, Jalen Duran uh, Drummond 2.0. At times, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know if you like that spot at all. Are you taking him at ADP? And then we'll talk about uh, Bridges and the Cover Boy. So I do like Duran tonight. Um, mm-hmm. Playing well lately, getting a consistent, you know, dosage of minutes. And while on one hand the matchup isn't quote unquote good, on the other hand, like. Because of how big they are, Duran's going to probably have to play like – I feel like his minutes floor is higher today just based right. on the matchup where they're going to need him in. Um, yeah. A beef stew came back and played like a heavy rotation. No, like I know. Played, I think he played like 33 minutes, I want to say. I was looking earlier. And that one was like alarming. But I guess they just need the size on the floor, right? Yeah, he played 34 minutes in his return. So, yeah. you know, there's also that. That's old school game there. Yeah. Get beef stew. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think Duran. Yeah, I think Duran. I mean, he's expensive. Is the thing. Um, mm-hmm. Like I wish he was a little cheaper. That's what's like yep, surprising. Is that like why are you not like why are you not buy quickly? Right. I wish you were. <laughs> yeah, entirely fair there, but uh, comfortable enough. I, I don't know. You sold me that pen a little bit on on taking the minutes uh, avenue there Mm -hmm. uh the charlotte one okay miles bridges yesterday he is uh a flow uh, we we mentioned how they haven't broken 100 points they got to 99 last night i think or 98 something like that they were close to breaking 100 but they haven't broken 100 points for four straight games their defense was much improved since the trade deadline they won three out of four games uh after the trade deadline with that defensive boost and now they've lost four in a row and haven't broken 100 points. And Miles Bridges has had some like pretty bad games. Let's just call it like that. Um, sure. He was ADP 12, 13 or something yesterday. What the fuck? Yeah, like that's what that's what he was yesterday, right? Um, now he gets a better spot, a better pace spot, I would think. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's neutral to our flow chart of of um, you know ball handlers versus Milwaukee from yesterday. But we're getting a 10, 11 pick discount on where he was going yesterday, and it's kind of hard to tell me a story that his ceiling isn't the same in this spot. Uh, why why is this happening, Nez? And why shouldn't I be getting over the field here? Ooh, I don't know about the last the last part of that question, um, but. I mean, they, they just look horrible, and they have played the – all they do is play the Bucks lately. So all they do is just get their doors beat off them. But <laughs> I like targeting the Sixers. I think uh-huh. – I mean, I think the Sixers have some vulnerabilities uh, defensively. And, I mean, you, you, this could be a big-time Alice Bridges game. I really like this ADP. I think okay. – I think this is we one where – I think this is one where you look – uh at, at what like he's done previously and yeah like the team has changed and they have some really bad recent recent games but this is against against the Sixers this this is uh easy 40 ball for Miles Bridges I think I like that shout yeah I like him man he feels like a comfy fourth round click right now I'm not gonna lie and I've been mixing in a little bit of um, Miller in the back end there and I will go as far as to mix in a little Nick Richards if we get uh Grant Williams out. I think you could see a big um Nick Richards spot versus um Paul Reed, man. Like Paul Reed's been getting cooked. Good shout. Um okay, cool. So in terms of I think that's kind of like the crux of it let's talk about like this back end uh we said we both kind of like tobias we oh we haven't we didn't talk about cover boy we talked about kaminga so we got the doubtful tag on pods which is a little unfortunate because we liked the kaminga spot even before that with Mm -hmm. wiggins out with the back-to-back does the travel stuff you know change anything from for for you does 
the narrative street change anything for you? Could we get some late funky Q tag BS knowing that they're on this long road trip, six out of nine days, and they're going to play Boston on Sunday? Uh, I'm going to let other people like read into that. I'm okay. I'm not. This is I I care about this matchup too much. This okay. is this is really really good for a Warriors team that has disappointed a lot lately. Knowing that like their offensive like ceiling is really really strong, uh, given the right matchup, and this is the right matchup. This is this is what you want. So, uh, I I, I hope that this story picks up steam. And it bleeds into projections. It won't bleed into projections. And it bleeds yeah. into the uh, subconscious of drafters because I want I want all these uh, I, want, I want these warriors primarily the- Stefan Kamenga. No, no clay okay. ever. He wants the cum bucket. Um, all right, cool. Any other love for like clay maybe vaulting into the starting lineup here with no pods and uh, no Wiggins? Do you think they go back to starting clay, or have we seen enough? of that and him being good enough against the off the bench that maybe they give like well, Moody, MVP. right? Moody, Moody will Moody. start. Yeah. It was Moody last game. Yeah. What if they said like F you clay, Steph, Chris, Paul, Moody, Kaminga, Draymond. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I think they or like, like or the, Gary Payton. <laughs> like, yeah, that, I mean, that almost, almost seems more viable. Like, I think they really like the, the CP three, like they did the starting CP three thing at the start of the year there. And I just don't think they loved it. You know, there wasn't a ton of, ton of games where him and Draymond played together that they've started both. I mean, we could go back and look, but I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I don't think they started them together a ton there when like everybody was healthy. So uh-huh. I, I don't think they kind of like CP three off the bench. I don't know. Big win at the garden. Now you go Toronto game in Toronto. You get the, the cross border travel, and then you get Boston on Sunday. I don't. They need to win ball games. It's a very weird situation, but uh, it's a hard lineup to to project right now. See what they have on. Yeah, they got Clay coming back into the starting lineup on Roto Grinders right now. I can't. Yeah. I can't fuck with that. I think. I think the the moving clay to the bench to get him going and that sort of thing. But now that CP three is back, I think he's better served as the off the bench run the second unit kind of guy with a little bit of overlap in handling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I guess that's a fine guess to say clay starts. I wouldn't be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't, you know? Right. Yeah. No, fully agree with you. Yeah. I, I, I'm not confident in, uh, in that at all. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, anyone else you want to shout out at the back end here? Any Draymond love in this matchup? It feels not as great, but yeah. Uh, if there's like nobody left, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe enough. like uh, like only as like the six oh six. Okay. Um, what about if Clay starts? Will you take him at all? Mm, if clay starts man i'll have to consider it to be honest uh just because i care so much about this raptors matchup the only other name i'd like to shout is just drew holiday you know nobody's gonna look his way and and i i totally like i totally understand but it's the mavericks and he he can have he can still have big games even with when everybody's healthy it's not likely Mm -hmm. but given this game against the mavericks he can and the last thing that i'll say is like when drafting uh, I'm doing a lot more correlation. I'm letting myself like get four pieces of one game, uh, okay. it, on on more of my teams. Is that a recency bias thing? Because you saw a double overtime game, and then you saw an overtime Lakers game last night on back to back slates. <laughs> I did it. Uh, the 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 night of the double OT, I just didn't get the right game. Um, mm-hmm. just kind of like compound it. Like if I like the Mavericks. Celtics game so much and the total is high imagine that high total plus OT you know it's like well if I like that game a lot why not take them and thinking in regulation multiple pieces can get there plus you have that potential like boost oh, um, yeah you know I don't think you, you should play smooth, for OT, but it's 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 something that I'm like I'm actively doing I am actively okay. like game stacking lately 
I am going to uh, bring up something real quick here. Let me see if I can get it. Um, it last night, Brad hit me up. Uh, Brad W and a bunch of numbers on Underdog Fantasy. Always hanging out in the Discord. And he sent me an email last night. Uh, let me see if I can get this. Interesting. Okay. I hadn't read the email yet. I hadn't um, gone through it fully. But he, he basically used an example slate. He used uh, February 22nd uh, after dark slate. He looked at four games. Um, we, haven't, we haven't heard from our guy Chad in a minute. But Chad had a tool that he shared with the Discord. Uh, we should check in on Chad make sure everything's all good. Because we haven't seen mm -hmm. him in a bit. Um, but Chad shared a tool with the Discord earlier this season about how, like, you know, certain guys might correlate. And it was just basically, basically like a correlation matrix chart. And right. Brad did it and applied it to an after dark slate here and basically found the R square correlation for certain players. Now, I don't know how I can share this unless I screen grab it, maybe. Okay, let me. I'm doing this all on the fly, guys. Bear with me. I hadn't even fully read the email yet, but... Okay. He used the date February 22nd, but I think this is the 29th um, slate. I'll just call it Feb 29. Okay. All right. And just working through combos that were... Can you read that? It's the best uh, it's, it's right pretty, I'm, let me try to full screen. It is a little tough. Here, I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in like crazy. Okay. okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so he basically like ran the correlations according to uh, the sheet there that, that Chad had had and then kind of just found the our value of whether they're good or bad or neutral. And, you know, some of it's kind of like makes sense in our mind, like Kuzma and Tyus, that should seem like a positive correlation, right? Tyus distributing, mm -hmm. you know, who's as a shooter kind of deal. Same thing with pool. Uh, but then like, you know, some of the bench pairings or some of the second unit pairings that turn to actually be bad. Anyways, I think this is a, a super good example. I'll read more through it. I'll actually read his email in depth before butchering it all. <laughs> um, you know, some of it's slate dependent. Some of it's, you know, whatever, like game plan dependent because it'll be like, you know, who has the handling role tonight because of the matchup from the defense on the other side, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But like, I think it's a, I think this is the next iteration of hoops on our platform. Do you not agree? Yeah, I think people are definitely going to be paying close attention to combos because that helps with that correlation piece that I was like speaking to. Uh, mm -hmm. It's even more powerful when you actually know how to do it correctly and and yeah. you understand who has the you know the 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 good pairings, like who actually benefits when you know when one person does well, to how who's actually positively affected, as opposed mm -hmm. to just kind of guessing you can use some common sense but you know it's not always correct so yeah this is this is awesome man brad's that's why brad's good brad's super sharp yeah absolutely and then, yeah there's a hand builder's delight for those who are who don't want to do the copper prices just trust the sims you know <laughs> are you in the, have um, you been in the baseball streets with copper uh i don't think so i mean maybe I he's in some of the he, slow drafts i fired up right been, now but i don't know he might have been finished, but he he's one fifty one fifty autoing the dinger. I oh, think one fifty. Wow. Very interesting. He's gonna have like eighty percent Kodai Senga. <laughs> Auto drafting at ADP or like he just interesting. from what I can see. Yeah. Hey, hey, hop in now and check the lineup. The robots are built. <laughs> I love go. it, man. He 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 must be like yeah. flush with some pick'em cash. Yeah, you used an expression the other night there, Nez, that I think is good to double back on that Chip's saying in the in the chat here. That's like uh, the next iteration is like just drafting like a known G leaguer who's going to be out for swap potential because you use the phrase "staying on the clock." Just stay on the clock, right? And 
it, it works in certain instances. I think last night guys got bailed out in a big effing way with the Beal one because only a six game slate with only one game as like the later of the windows, that 6 p.m. game, your swap options were going to be super limited. And if Beal was out, like there wasn't really any good swap options from that game unless you got Jalen Green out as well, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it it it's interesting. Like I think it was a bailout slate last night for those plays, but it's neither here I nor mean, there because they they ended up out and in and we got the it, news early enough. But right. I think the fact that it came early you got bailed out because I called it yesterday. As soon as I we got the Ben Simmons downgrade, like I'll let everybody know, like Schroeder and Cam Johnson, like should be in your six round player pool. And those guys were very, very, very significant swap options there. Or you could have swapped to Jalen Green and delayed it even further if he did sit while also having a good season against the Suns. Ahmed Thompson. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, Yesterday was just was just a very nice like aligning of, you know, of process there. Yeah. Yeah. And I was. For sure. Um, yeah, I, I, 31% Cam Johnson didn't turn into anything. Turned into minus $500 because that's what happens when you fade Wemby and all that matters is Wemby. You Dude, Wemby is it. going to like break everything. Just absolutely yeah, everything. People are talking like in four or five years, he's going to be running the league. Like next season, he is going mm-hmm. to be in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's happening sooner than you think. Here's a, here's a really interesting question. Like, if you put him on a play-in team right now, would they be a favorite to win a series? So, let's put him on, I don't know, like, just put him on, I, I saw this on Twitter, I can't remember even the team that somebody used. But let's put Wemby on... Dude, you can put him on like here. Here's a yeah. Fun. Let me let me you just throw on one out anyone, there. This isn't yeah. like the bottom of the plans, but like if Wemben Yama, we wake up and oh yeah, he's he's a he's an Orlando Magic. Yeah, that's a good one. What are the Orlando Magic odds after that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just. I, I, I get, they're not the favorite in the East, but they're close. That that's an insane team. Like if you put okay, you put Wemby on the Mavs. Who would you take in a series, the Cavs or the Mavs? What the, the Mavericks are winning the finals if Wemby is? Oh, a, oh, oh, I didn't mean the Mavs. I meant Magic. Magic. Oh. We were talking with the Magic one. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I think this is Tatum for me. By the way. Yeah, sure. I know it is, but um, he might get the he might get the PJ Washington treatment tonight, though. Dude, he's gonna cook. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I didn't mean I didn't mean on the Mavs. I'm yeah. carrying on the Magic conversation. Here. Dude, they, they, I would take them over the over the Cavs. Would you take them over a healthy Knicks team? <laughs> I think so. That's you a seven to, game right? series, but I think I would. I think I would, man. Yeah. Like that's that, that Wemby is Wemby is unbelievable. Just straight up, man. Just we can't fathom his ceiling. Yeah. Put yeah, the, pray, the, pray the, for this man's the, health. The block stats from uh, from February were crazy. That he had more blocks himself than five NBA teams. I think Underdog tweeted that one earlier. So it's, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. He might be the only person like th- how, there's going to be so few people that have blocked the Chet Holmgren jump shot in his career when it's all said and done. Like mm-hmm. Wemby's Wemby stuffed that man. Pause. <laughs> uh all right, we got Tatum so far. Uh board looks pretty similar. I'd be taking Ant over Hallie, never Hallie. Um Interesting decision to us. Let's let's play it hypothetical for the for the chat here. If okay. both Q tags fall to us, who do you like better? Donovan Mitchell or Darren Fox? Zion Williamson. Do you take Zion here over Fox? Yeah, maybe that's a bridge too far, but yes. 
Okay. I think it's a bridge too far because I think you'll just get them every single time in the third if you want them. I just uh, don't. I just don't like this matchup for Donovan Mitchell at all. For Mitchell? No, for Fox. Correct. Sorry. Yeah, for yeah. for Fox. Okay. Um, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, it's, it, I have some I have some worries about this one. I know it's he wasn't he didn't play yesterday, but just in general for the Sacramento team. Yeah, two days ago. Yeah, and he he did the he did the same thing two days ago. He did the participated in shoot around and then didn't play. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So there's a non-zero chance he sits again tonight. Yeah, I just want to be overweight Zion, but like you said, we'll probably get him here. Tyler put, uh, apologizing for being in hella drafts right now. Yeah, P jail. There you go. P jail for Tatum. Um So Zion over cover boy? Yeah, with it on a Tatum team, I think so. They can certainly coexist. I wouldn't avoid it all the time, but it's definitely not something I'm doing more more, more often than not. No way. Mm-hmm. That'd be a very interesting one. Well, I think the most interesting ones to look through in the correlation matrix will be the Cleveland stuff, the Chicago stuff, the um, Pelican stuff, and the Boston stuff. Those are the four that jump out to me as the uh, the most important to look through in the matrix because those are the teams that we routinely, you know, game to game, matchup to matchup. I don't know whose night it's going to be. I don't know who to pick. And I think it could really illuminate who we want to pair together. So I guess I would say like a little bit, yes and no. And the only reason I say that is because like given their matchups, like I, I think I would like not care so much about that, that, that correlation value just because the matchup, is just so good that you're talking about that, tonight. Yeah. Oh, I was just talking in a vacuum, like for well, life. well, right. But this, but but this is tonight, and we're you know, so like, I don't really care. Like, if Zion and Bi don't pair well, hypothetically, like mm-hmm. overall, because I like them tonight. I like them both tonight. So, right. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, given given it's the Pacers, I think you can kind of weight the fact that it is the Pacers more so than what they do Whether on average. Correlated together. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how I maybe think about it. Doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah, maybe it doesn't matter as much as I think it matters. Then. Hmm. We, we might are have to slow do right now. Later. Yeah, we could do pick them right after this one, and then do baseball or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'd like a little pick em sweat this evening, knowing that I can't do a ton more drafting the remainder of today. Yeah, you got a you got a Friday planned. Body do I ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, nothing too crazy. Um, okay, I'm Team Simons here. You could sell me this pen on Allen. You could sell me this pen on quickly. You could sell me this pen on Kaminga, but I think we can get Kaminga on the other side. Yeah, si- you can go ahead and do Simons. Yeah, I like the Simons matchup, dude. He's playing big minutes too, and there's there are not many bodies there. He he's for sure like their primary offensive player here. Right. Granted the yeah. low total, but mm-hmm. like, who the hell are they going to play tonight? Like, is it, they're missing a lot of guys. Like, it's going to be like Bible if they go small. They might do like a little like Walker slash wreath split the five. Grant's going to play a ton. Chris Murray was like low key in play on the dad slate the other night. He's been starting. Yeah. Um, they're, 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 they're a disgusting rotation. They are one of the worst possible teams to have on a four game slate. It doesn't yeah, really get too much worse than that. Yeah. Them and the Grizz playing each other is that's, that's a fun disgusting one okay i'm uh regardless of what this guy looks like he's just auto drafting adp because this is two times in a row that he's just timed out and taken the top player um i would take Allen if he came back he wasn't going to come back uh we could do the kaminga and push him up here because we like it or we can do iq because we still like the flow chart iq pattern i think i would go kaminga okay think he's like kind of like the riser on the day 
I don't even care if he fries this. He probably is. He probably uh-huh. is. Uh, he's just like, this is, I'm just, I have a lot of conviction on this one. Without, okay. without Wiggins, a lot, like already, just without Wiggins, like his role and his usage just changes in a pretty big way. Now without pods as well. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for him tonight. Like I think the the green, he's got a four X double double. Uh, I love that. Okay. I love that. I mean, that's a very very very, uh, you know, long <laughs> long chance of hitting. But I don't if, know, I'm gonna hey, do a little if Steph with if it. Steph can get a double double in the garden in in, in the first half in the first half, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Man, I can't believe there's um, there is um, uh, combine pick'em stuff too. That's pretty cool. That's gonna be pretty fun for the weekend if anybody you know wants to get their their football brain on and that that deep dive there. But I was looking through that stuff yesterday. It's pretty wild. That's insane, man. That is I just, love it. That is that hey, is it holds, wild, man. It, it holds true to what I said on Wednesday and often on the clock when we were talking to Pete there about football. It's just like. Guys would rather watch dudes run in their underwear for four seconds and then guess their future in the middle of March than watch real life sports. <laughs> like it's crazy. Like that's the power and gravity that football holds. It's it's nuts, man. It's it's it's, it's, it's distressing. <laughs> I can't believe it. I just like. Uh-huh. I yeah. love I love I love our 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 our, our sport. I love football. Uh-huh. But we're multi-sport athletes for a reason. That's yeah, it's good for the brain. <laughs> Did you see what your boy Rome said in regards to being able to land a plane in an emergency? No, I did not. I he, said, he said everybody's perishing. <laughs> <laughs> no shot. He said, we're he said we're going down. <laughs> That's my guy. Um, Garland jumps out to me as like a contingent off the let him know. Brandon Miller. I like Miller or, or White. Okay, let's do Miller. Miller is the same thesis as Miles Bridges that we were saying before, where uh-huh. it's kind of like the matchup against the Sixers. Okay. I'll throw out one more dark horse in the sixth round as Buddy Heald. I don't know how, if that's going a bridge too far. But that rotation looks thin tonight, and I think there's a chance that he starts and plays some decent minutes. Oh, get you Mr. Good Boys out. Let's go. Get you. Yeah. No, I, I think that makes sense. <laughs> oh, for sake, four seconds to be right. Okay, man. It's just a sentence. Oh man. Um <laughs> here you go. Could you guys land a plane in an emergency situation? Absolutely. I undoubtedly 100% could. My, uh, actually, my brother in law I don't know if I can land it. Yeah, my brother in law has his pilot's license and they use the little, like, uh, that's not, they, they own, like, a, one of those small planes to uh, spray pesticide on, like, the field and stuff like that nice. for, for the farming stuff. Uh, anyways, yeah, he, he, I've been, been in the plane a couple times enough to know like you know where shit is and what's going on i i got you guys we're in emergency situation we're flying to vegas for the ship chasing meetup and i'm i'm taking the reins of that plane and i'm getting us safely on the ground that's i trust you with my <laughs> life i would it would have to be uh, <laughs> okay. i need to I need to take a quick intermission before we hop into the baseball streets. Okay. I will. Okay. Nez, before you do that, did he already do that? Okay. Before you do that, um, should we try and do perfect game again? We try and coerce the yeah. people into a perfect game. Yes. Okay. All right. Give it a shot. Okay. I'm doing perfect game. If the people want to pony up four more spots for a Friday, Friday, perfect game. <laughs> That's John. Not that I appreciate it. Ooh, Gipsy got a nice little Yordan Wit start. I actually passed on a Yordan Wit 
yesterday for a Jordan uh, Matt Olson. So I don't know what you guys think about that one. Let me know what you guys think. Holy shit. Wu Tang say there's a birds aren't real guy at the combine. That's incredible. Incredible, man. All right, here we go. Justin's in here. We got the Dog Bowl champ in here. Baby Stevie. Jacob rolls the 101. Dog Bowl participant. Love to see it. Short Gamer TV. He's a millionaire. What's he doing in here? Already won a million bucks on Redacted this year. Get out of my lobbies. Yeah, this was a quick one, guys. We'll try it. We'll try it. We'll try it again soon. I'm going to keep trying to be the guy that fills the perfect games because I know they're hard to fill on our own. Oh, TK's in here too. Nice. Okay. We got friends and family draft. Uh, I'm going to keep trying to be the, the, the perfect game filler because I know these lobbies sit stagnant, especially midweek. They're, they're a little bit better on the weekends and stuff like that, but I know they're low key hard to, to fill. So we'll keep, we'll keep trying to fill them. Wow, Jacob! Last three drafts had the one zero one. He's on a heater. Where are we draft? What are we drafting here? We're drafting perfect game. Perfect of game for the eight hole. Yeah, and I, I think this is a good thing for us to keep trying to to fill these perfect game ones. Because how sick would it be for this to fill like really early? Yeah. Right. No. It'd be awesome. Please. That'd be great. Oh, I'd love another go. another like mid stakes tournament. Uh, have you done your solo shot yet? Uh-uh. There's a lot left there. Yeah, there is. This is hilarious. Yeah, here you go. Hey, what's going on? Lava Lava Lord found it for us. There's there your alley with the with the sleeves. Look at that, monster. man. <laughs> and he's what wearing the glasses. Wearing? He's wearing the glasses too. Uh this is Jordan for me, Nez. Yeah, I gotta go Yordan. It's gotta be Yordan. Man, I, I am quite comfortable getting over the field on Yordan and, and pushing him up this year. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh easy, like pretty simple to stack. I mean, you gotta gotta pay a premium, but stackable. Uh and just, and just an absolute force, man. If we get to if we we haven't seen like a full, you know, 140 games from Jordan, I don't believe like, you know, we haven't mm -hmm. gotten the full Jordan experience yet. Um, he played 144 in 2021. Um, yep. Like I want to see him get 600 plate appearances. Just see oh, what happens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's, we talked about it last year. He's the best pure hitter in baseball. End of statement. Now he's a two hitter. Yeah. Now you give him 30 more at bats. Stay healthy, young man. I mean, Buddy. he's an old young man, like with those knees and stuff like that. That was always the narrative and his ability to play the field and like whatever. But I like it. With it. Yeah, he played 40 games and left last season. Um, at least they got the short Crawford box out there. Yeah. Like, and just Ooh. like let him play the field against. Um, when when uh when like Valdez is pitching, you know, like a ground ball pitcher, he's not gonna have to like do a lot with. Maybe not with yeah. the the other guys. Yeah, like uh with like Frommer on the mound. Yeah, yeah. That'd be perfect. Like he won't have start to... monster with low with a high ground ball ground ball rate. Yeah. Don't even have to he won't even have to catch a ball. <laughs> The other one that's that might be moving up in the order there with uh, J Ram, J Ram might be uh, moving up there too. Up, up. Wait, where J Ram? Give me a hit in second. Apparently, instead of He's like the fun, three These... four territory territory in the last couple of years. It's hard to go wrong here, at this range. I mean, these guys are all just so damn good. This is this is where it's fun. Yeah, I mean, I if like... Schwarber didn't have outfield eligibility, I would take J Ram over him every single time. hundred percent. Not even, not even a question. Okay. Nez, this one for me right here is J Ram or trout. Uh, who is it for you? 
Uh, I would say J Ram, but if you want to go Trout, let's do it. No, I'm cool with it. Let's do it. Cool. I I think I'm J Ram over Austin Riley. I do. I'm like kind of an Austin Riley hater a little bit. Why? I just don't trust him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, if you had like a, if you had like a, a reasoning as to why. I mean, I, I just, I, I, what always sticks in my head is like Austin Riley has some droughts, you know. And all I just yeah, think no, about is like, what so. if there's, what, what and if they're like, usually what early in the season too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not that that like matters for a best ball. Uh, how how do you well, how do you say the the T word a best best ball? Uh, I guess tournament is a is a is a colloquialism thing. Do you say tournament or tournament? I don't know tournament. You what say tournament? I, say? I, tournament. I I say tournament. I guess that's um tournament, like a like a yeah, that might be an East Coast thing. Tournament. Yeah, that's what Ray's it saying in the chat. Tournament. Okay. Oh, here you go. Yeah. Moved to Ohio and pronounced tournament instead of tournament. Yeah, it must be a Pittsburgh thing. Okay, there you must go. Must be. Must be. I was wondering yeah. where the fuck you got that from. I didn't realize. I wasn't looking at the chat for a second there. Yeah, and then Ahmed Rosario, a.k.a. Julian, saying, doesn't every player have long slumps? They do. That's why I'm like, yeah. I'm, fully, I'm fully admitting that this is just like a little bit of blindness. I can't draft everybody there. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Austin Riley. I don't know. Dude, this is why I love baseball. Like, you can just kind of do whatever you want in drafts and, like, make it make sense when you're, like, thinking through, you know, range outcomes and how to build and whatnot. Like, we see Shohei go at two here. We see Jacob get basically my favorite start, most coveted start with the Acuna plus Trout. That's probably, like, that's not, like, a full-fledged GM GM. That's probably my favorite start. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, this is cool. See Justin on the end. He might be auto drafting, but just double tapping those infielders from the backside. If he's auto drafting, it's interesting that he has wit ahead of Olsen. I have Olsen ahead of wit in my stuff. Yeah, I wonder. Because he's been, he's auto drafting the dingers. I don't know that he's auto drafting the hundred as well. Yeah, he might be. He's just that guy. Um Michael Harris, he's homer twice in spring now. That's a fun stack. Uh, Nolan Jones. I don't do a ton of Nolan Jones. Corbin Burns. Nolan Jones. Who do you want? Do Nolan Jones. Obvious. Let's do Nolan Jones. Yeah, I, I don't do him a ton. I think I led the witness there, Nez, but it's because I haven't taken a ton of them this year, and everyone smart around me seems to like them more than I like them. Yeah, uh, everything about about this kid just seems like this is uh this is this is what you want i mean playing at cores as often as he does let alone just like his own skill set in a vacuum mm -hmm. yeah i'm it, it i don't i'm not overweight nolan jones but he's a he seems like a pretty much a slam dunk pick okay yeah dog bull champ chiming in saying uh he's about it too yeah, everyone, everyone's in on Nolan Jones. I mean, it, it helps, definitely helps, playing at cores. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> Newsflash. <laughs> Newsflash. Coors Field, good for production. <laughs> JRAM is a nice pick too because he's he's pretty easy to stack. Well, you you get all warm and fuzzy about getting Josh Naylor late. Like too easy. Too. It's too yeah. easy. Wow, Chip's got almost fifty percent Nolan Jones in the dinger. Jeez. Stance. Hey man, he was he was right about Wemby, and he was right about what was the other one you were right about, Chip? The the only other one Chip other time misses. you were correct. No, he, he had a really good uh, he had a really good football one last year too. That he was saying that like his he's been really good at the overweight in the middle tiers uh, mm -hmm. shouts. Pablo Lopez over uh, Yoshi and Kevin Gosman there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I okay, don't know what got... to make about the Lopez jump in K's. Yeah, well, when we were looking at the the Pickham lobby there, we we were both low key shocked of his uh, his overarching number. Yeah. 
All right, let's have a let's have a conversation here. I think we can speak pretty candidly on this one. Um, for me, this is kind of like the comfort zone to click pitcher. I think there's another way to start this lineup that I like, where we stack Altuve with Jordan here. I would take Altuve here. Okay. And like Bregman comes back a lot, and you can turn it into a triple stack. I don't know if our stacking mantra has gone too far. But I do view this as like a weekly contest when you're advancing four in the first round. So I I do view as like, how are we going to smash? Because I think in a vacuum, I prefer Bo over Jose Altuve, given like the age, what what Bo's done recently, blah, blah, blah. But I think for the stacking purposes, this makes a lot of sense. I'm back and forth on the Blue Jays. Um, Mm -hmm. That's one instance where, you know, you can't, I think that's going to be where I draw the line on like projections versus IKB is the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. What I saw scared me. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's weird when, like, how weird is it that everybody, everybody at once just, just failed? That's so weird. Yeah. It's so weird. Well, I, I think a lot of it had to do with the park change, man. I think it's really understated how, how much they zapped right handed power there. And what is the crux of your team? Right-handed power. That and, I mean, you can also, like, poke holes in all three of, like, the studs. Even you can expand that uh, in the Blue Jays, too. Like, Bo Bichette, interesting hit tool, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Vlad but the and- Allen hits, like, two of the three, last three years. Yeah, but it's, like, a weird – it's just a weird hit tool, in, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Just so insanely aggressive um, yeah. that, like, I think that – can lead to being exploited. Um, who okay, knows here, let if me, he's going to bounce back? I, sorry, I didn't cut you off twice. I want you to, to ramble, but I I think when you say when you say aggressive hit tool, shortstop, and like is the pop like fully there kind of guy? I think Tim Anderson could Bobuchet oh. age like Tim Anderson. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. Like low walk rate for a leadoff guy. But big hits and big, um, big average guy. Interesting. I don't know. This mm-hmm. pump I came up with in my mind. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> well, but, definitely, um, hopefully not. But yeah. Yeah, and then like the Vlad ground ball rate. I don't know. He's got a. It's not. It's. It wouldn't be improbable if he figured that out. I, okay. I totally. Yeah. I totally understand that. Um, but but <laughs> Springer isn't getting any younger. I don't know. Yeah, he's 34, 33 this year. George Springer is 34 years old. Wow. Yeah. That's way older than like you would like. If you just lined up a bunch of baseball fans and you said, guess how old George Springer is, I bet you most of them would still guess like 30, 28, like something in that range. Yeah. It, it's He's up there. But everybody's just like, nope, Vladdy's, Vladdy's bouncing back. Like, mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> he's still young. Like, I mean, like, what's he? Twenty four. He's he's turning twenty five uh, yeah. this month. That checks out. Um, we should talk Springer to the point in which he didn't. He almost came back, but didn't fully come back. Uh, I like Manny Machado here, even if it's unstacked. Do you prefer Castellanos or a pitcher? Um. Yeah, I think I prefer um, Ozuna, Valdez, or Webb. But like, you can make this pick, man. This is your this is your big entry. Yeah, okay. I'm doing I'm doing Manny. Yeah, I don't feel strong Manny's, enough about it. I think he's one of the most mispriced uh, infielders. I like him. Yeah, that not was, much has changed. That was my my mic. Some I don't know. There's always some crazy shit. Someone said that it sounded like someone's crashed my car. Crash your car. <laughs> Outside, here. They, I live like an intersection's right outside, and I'd say like once every like three months, there's a there's an accident. Oh, for real? Yeah, it's crazy. Like people just drive like idiots over here. Like I hear that right now. Like I hear the bus going by. That's, That's like, loud. A, yeah, you can hear the bus go by for sure. I'll start to mute that. Okay, I hope one of these guys comes back to us in terms of like the ace tier uh, scooball uptick. 
Kubal uptick uh, in the velo to start spring there was a nice encouraging sign to see, though I don't care that much. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that we're tracking in spring. Actually heard an interesting conversation. Might have been rates and barrels. Might have been somewhere else recently that, like, you know, people used to just be like, we don't care about spring. We don't care. Like, spring doesn't matter when drafting fantasy baseball. And now I think we're at a point where, like, spring low-key really matters because we're getting way more televised games. We're getting way more data. And we can, like, sift through it in an intelligent manner where spring does matter. Like, you know, in the same way that, like, preseason football matters, but it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what to what to make of it. I I, I personally don't want to like get too over my skis on on the spring training stuff. But yeah, um, it's, it's hard to not let it seep in. Like when, yeah, like like when Aaron Nola coming off like a wishy washy season, in my opinion, like comes out today and doesn't get a single strikeout, like. All right, like guys are striking other guys out. Like, like there are pitchers that are recording strikeouts in spring training. Like, you know, it's not right. like a that's not like a normal thing. And same with Joe Musgrove. Like, no strikeouts at all in spring training. It's hard to not let that seep in. But <laughs> not even strikeouts. Just uh, he's basically not even getting outs. <laughs> yeah, his ERA is like infin- in- infinity right now. Um, I think we start our staff here, Nez. Uh, you could sell me on one of the outfielders if you wanted to do like the Evan Carter thing. But I think we. I don't want to fall too, too far behind pitching. And I, I kind of like just taking Snell though. It's getting scarier. I I don't think I have any Snell. So I would do maybe. Who do you C's like? Who do you like then? Cease like or like, Cease? Okay. or Grayson who's down there, but. Okay. Let's do bounce back. Cease then. Yeah, I Cease? think I, I, good. Well, he is like a ceiling archetype, right? Like he is, he's low key Glasnow archetype but like around later obviously considerably worse team and you know maybe not the same ceiling though we have seen similar ceiling in terms of like strikeout rate and stuff from him but he was a guy that we were rightfully down on last year at adp and now i'm slowly like let's just buy the tools and see what happens with this guy his ceiling is like astronomical like ceiling in in these games for pitchers like it's it's all strikeouts. Mm-hmm. It's all strikeouts. How many guys can you strike out? And that is fully determinant of like your ceiling. And you know, these these contests are won in 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 the final two weeks. So can capture some some ceiling there for cease when it matters most. And you you'll you can forgive the ups and downs of a regular season from him. I think he makes a lot of sense. And I am personally like plugging my nose and taking him uh, because of what you said. Like he has one of the best K rates in baseball. And you know, that that's what you're playing for first place here. Uh, right. It, it's that, it's that simple. So I, I've been taking a lot more Dylan C's lately and just not caring about the ugliness that comes with the regular season. Yeah, I just looked, did a little look up on the playoff schedule, and I'm kind of getting the heebie jeebies on this one. Uh, sometimes you learn these lessons on the fly. But if we're looking for a two start week in the finals from Dylan Cease, he gets Texas at home, the Mets at home, then at Baltimore, a rest day, like a, like a, a scheduled off day, and then at Boston. That is not fun. Yeah, that that's that. I mean, like, can he go out and strike out one of those lineups, you know, nine, ten times like he's capable of? Absolutely. But am I looking to get like super over on it right now after reading that? Oh, that was that was a little that was a little scary. Yeah, the bull case is he's traded. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is the bull case. That is definitely the bull case. Get him. Get him uh, something else. I like Logan. But uh, you could sell me some other directions here. We're not Logan. stacking Quan. We're not stacking Quan, no matter what you say. Even if there's I was a never going to say that. Logan Gilbert. Okay, I like Logan too. You can't go wrong with the with the Mariners pitcher. Nah, man. <laughs> Give 
Jay is correct. We are all just going to lose. <laughs> you guys are going to lose. Yeah. Idiot. I'm I'll, making $100,000. I'll, I'll repay you in content. How's that? <laughs> <sighs> Ramer goes there. Okay, cool. Do we have any night games tonight? That is the question. We do have a a two game dad slate. No, I was looking at baseball. Oh, for I, I don't training. watch basketball anymore. I watch spring training now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got two night games: Arizona, Cincinnati, and Cleveland and the Dodgers. Both Arizona games. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of spring training pickums, and I was off to a hot start, and it hasn't been hasn't been good since. Let's uh, let's do let's do a um, um, NBA one here. You said you had a couple that you liked. Let's mix yeah. in the NBA pickum here. Share it with everybody. So we got a we got a sweat tonight for for your boy who uh, can't draft a ton more this this day. Dude, the the Friday slate is over fifty percent full. That's wild. Good. I guess it is getting up there, but yeah, one thirty my time. It was basically where it was yesterday. Maybe yesterday was a little lagging a little bit. Knew me would know. <laughs> it's um Max the lock. Lash it. Lock is in two hours. Mm. I got to get more drafts in, dude. I'm way fucking behind. <laughs> That's what sucks is like I really want to draft and then like I also like typically go to the gym after these shows and then like mm -hmm. I'm stuck on the on the bike or on the treadmill just like drafting 15 hoops drafts at once and then I never end up doing a any <laughs> any actual weightlifting. I'm just <laughs> steady state cardio for an hour as I cram in drafts and mix mix up my six round picks. Fair enough. This is kind of a fun range to pick. I like this range of the board. Yeah, me too. I'm a little concentrated around here, but it doesn't mean I don't like it. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, regardless of who gets taken here. who? Oh, Friedel, I like that. Um, okay, who, who do you like here? I would like to set up maybe some Chicago stuff with Bellinger. Me too. I, I like that you said that. I just mm -hmm. needed a confirmation bias. Yeah, yeah I like that a lot. I, I like Yandy a lot too. I like Carlos Rodon. Obviously, I've been talking about that one. I like Joe Ryan. Um, I love Joe Ryan. I slowed down on, on my Joe Ryan stuff, but he, I, I think he's got an underrated ceiling. Yeah, he's I mean, pretty inconsistent uh, last year. That's all. Jacob was saying in the chat there that, um, you know, Pablo added the sweeper last year. Well, so did Joe Ryan. Did he not? I I don't know that for certain. Oh, I'm not that familiar with Joe Ryan's game. I just know that he's got stuff. That's for sure. This Cole Re this Cole Reagan steam is pretty pretty unbelievable. Yeah, Jacob just took him at seventy two there. I mean, it's it's unbelievable because they're a bad team too, right? Like they're a bad baseball team. I mean, maybe they might outperform. Like what? What? What would you set their their uh, higher lower wins at right now for Casey? Seventy five. Seventy. I'd take the I I'd, I'd go I'd go lower. I would say 72 and a half. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, that doesn't That doesn't give a lot of wins to a young arm that has the potential to be shut down early to protect. Yeah, I I, I tend to fade the shutdown fud, but uh I just wish I had more of them because it's like people saw them and they're like, "Oh yeah." Like Cole Reagan's is filthy as fuck. Right. <laughs> like I better yeah. start taking him. Like that's a that's what's annoying. Is like there really is like a, a tiny bit of edge before spring training where like there's guys that just have to show you a little bit. And I feel like it's maybe it's mostly pitchers or unless some guy hits a home run, then it's like oh shit, here we go. Um, you know, I'm glad that like Josh Naylor hasn't hit two run home runs in a game yet. Like thank God for that. Um, <laughs> the Langford steam though is coming. Oh, dude, it, it's yeah, it's already. He's at 92. He's, he, he can. He's going right. He's going to move up another round. Hmm. And then some. Yeah. Um. Hey, Jay, come on, man. Take it easy. I got smoked in hoops last night, dude. I don't need to be reminded. Come on. <laughs> I actually watched a little bit of hoops yesterday, too. Um, Dude, 
Wu Tang Killer Beast playing the hits on me right here. Like the the cease need, like getting cease to uh, Seattle is just like so so good for all parties involved. It kind of it's a better thesis than my Blake Snell thesis was. If cease was a Mariner, forget about it. Yeah, like just forget about it. All that stuff that gets hit hard now stays in the yard. Oh my God, he's a Cy. He's already like a low key Cy Young candidate, but like mm-hmm. Julian with a little bit of context here. And Ryan's throwing a new sinker and slider. I love when guys add sinkers. Per hour. I think that's such an effective way to change your arsenal. Um, Matt McClain, we only got two outfielders. Buxton kind of fits that need. Or what if you go to Nico to Horner? Morel, Morel to stack. I'd rather do Morel. Morel will stack. be there, or maybe not. Go ahead, take Morel. Okay. Yeah, I think Nico or Swanson will always be there on the way back. I don't necessarily know that Morel will be. That's, yeah, that's and fair. like the outfield designation really matters. And also, one thing about like, like this is like fractions of difference in my mind right now in terms of stacking. But it's like Morel's going to hit closer to Bellinger in the lineup than Nico ever will. Uh, Nico's won't Nico like lead off and hit toward the top yeah, of the order. Lead off. Yeah, he'll lead off every single day. And, and then Bellinger's and, gonna hit like three or four. Yeah. I think Belly 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 hits four or five, like something like that. And they do what they did last year. Hap hits three every single day. And then Morel is most likely gonna hit five or six or two. Yeah. So I just think about like him always being closer to Belly than Nico will be, because Nico will always lead off. The only time he didn't lead off last year is when Mike Talkman let off for some righties. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Oh, here you go. Dogman Chill saying that he might not be the favorite to lead off this year. Hap is the favorite. Hap has let off most spring games. There you go. So there might be a flippening there. Senga just went. Where would mm-hmm. Senga have to fall for you to take him? 60. Yeah. 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 I, I don't. I, if they come out and say, like, no way, 60 day IL, that might do something for me. But they also haven't, like, said they're keep, keeping it an option, but it just seems like mm-hmm. it's certain. But they've already said. He- yeah, they already said he's starting on the DL. I don't know. The Rates and Barrels guys were talking about it the other day, how like they like Bradish more than Sanga because like at least the team hasn't said that he won't start on the IL. And just so many of these, I mean, they equate it to draft and hold leagues, but just saying that like, yeah, I, I, I just basically saying that like, taking him is a death sentence in such shallow rosters because you're going to have so many injuries creep up anyways. I can't believe they said yeah. Bradish over him. I think they're in the same bucket. Yeah, probably. Um, we could do the Nico or Swanson here. I prefer Swanson over Nico. Uh, or we could do some pitching stuff. Uh, I would probably say Nico, but Dan- let's go do, Dan- do Dansby. I-, I-, I think you should stack uh, the Cubs here. Okay. You can you can leave it here and call it, but um, I think it's a good idea to get this trio. I think the Cubs are Cubs are a really dangerous lineup. Yeah, well, I mean we saw it last year. They were one of the lineups that I mean two dingers ago it was Baltimore that just outperformed their ADP like crazy in the back end of the drafts, and that was what smashed you know the Santander with Mount Castle with Austin Hayes like that shit. Then we saw it last year get absolutely smoked with the Cubs stuff. And then, you know, this year they're running back that same lineup. So, like, it's basically the price regressed to where it once was like a year ago. And now it hasn't fully adjusted yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, they're a really good offense. Uh, that helps when you, when like Swanson and Horner both like, are not really known for slugging, but they're going to get their own counting stats in a, in a pretty big way, I would bet. Yeah. I mean, I would take the Swanson homers over Nico's this year, like without even thinking, but apart from that. 
Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm like okay with like a compiler that steals bases. Like I, I get that that's not like the thing people are doing, but that type of player can can still crack a starting lineup in a big way. So. Yep. Like how how many doubles did Horner have last season? Twenty seven. Oh my god, I was just about to guess and my guess was 28. Oh, oh that would have been sick. That would have been a nice one. I was like tw- and then you said it. Sorry. No, no, that's not sorry at all. I was just trying to get a, a cheeky one in there. A uh, triple Brewer stack there for baby Stevie at the three hole. With uh Yelich? His last three picks. I don't know if he has. Oh, yet. I missed. Oh, Reese Hoskins blew my mind. Right. <laughs> Ward, a very popular pick in yeah. the community. Dude, I don't think I can. Is this even like Shane Bieber territory this late? I, I was going to say that I'd rather have Chaz McCormick and stack them with uh, Altuve and Jordan. Yeah. We're, we're I a little bit like, I, I've seen some like people not buying the Chaz McCormick uh, breakout. Uh-huh. And I think that it's like okay to to say that. Um, I'm buying it. Those people didn't play dailies <laughs> last year. I mean, the, it didn't. It doesn't strike me as like fraudulent. I don't know. I don't. I mean, four eighty nine is a hell of a slugging, but like on this Astros team, being an everyday player in the lineup, mm-hmm. he's gonna he's gonna compile. Yeah, and like Jose Abreu had such a bad year last year until like the end. Like, he, what did we keep joking about? He went 81 days without a home run dating back to, like, the previous year or whatever. <laughs> like, there's a non-zero yeah. chance. And, like, during those stretches, like, roster resource and stuff, we'll have Chaz McCormick hitting, like, seven or eight right now with, like, Jeremy Pena and stuff at the back end there. Like, who the hell is going to take away left field from him? Like, Jordan will, like, once in a while play left field, but he'll, he's the everyday DH. Like, who's going to take it away? Like, Marcel Dubon and Jake Myers are both, like, glove-first center fielders. They'll, like, you know, switch off. Tucker plays right every single day. So, you know, Chaz plays six out of seven days, and he plays left field because Jordan can't play full-time outfield. It just it feels so comfy in the middle of that lineup that they've gotten rid of guys that were going to take away at bats from him because Michael Brantley would have been a platoon option in years past. Um, yeah, now they just don't have that platoon option because they have no left-handed stick on the bench. McCormick has an interesting spray chart. Just checking this out. He's got a lot of oppo home runs, but also a lot of like pulled balls for, for singles there. Um, interesting. Yeah. I, I just buy it. I don't know. I think, I think it makes a lot of sense in a stack. Yeah. I like them too. Yeah, and McCormick can play with center field. There you go. So, like, I mean, they've been on record. Dusty Baker's been on record of loving Jake Myers for whatever fucking reason. They love Jake Myers. But, uh, yeah, and it's why, like, Chaz wasn't a full-time player at stretches last year, even when he was cooking. But we would play him every single day in the dailies. Um, I don't love Kim. Uh, I kind of like Shoda here or Javier. We've already made a Cubs bet. Shoda fits well with that. Yeah, I like I like I like Shoda. This is a pretty good range for for him. Like I get the questions on him as a player, but this is if a you, very fine range. If you blocked out the positions on like kind of like all these players right here, I think I would take Vinny P first. But the fact that we already have five infielders and you know, there's also some backstack outfielders that go with Vinny P that are kind of fun. Um, yeah. Because you can just, like, put them with, like, Velasquez or you can put them with uh, MJ Melendez or Melendez. I 
Mm-hmm. I almost made it a show. I almost made oh. it a show without messing up a name, dude. I was lo- I was <laughs> waiting for it. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> oh. Okay, Nez, filibuster for one sec for me. There goes Barrios. What's going on, guys? How are we doing? 70 of, 73 of us in here. Hit the like button if you haven't hit the like button. If you're not a member, highly recommend it. We do some good stuff behind the paywall. Some some shows, some vibes, some alpha. If you're trying to do a pick'em, I think a great place to start. My my, my monitor's cut out. If you're trying to do a pick'em today and you're looking for something to start with, do a little Jonathan Kaminga higher 19 and a half points, why don't you? It has my endorsement. He's got a double double for four X. That's not likely to hit, but it's fun. If you want a 4X spice, you can do worse than a Kaminga double-double. Jack Sawinski, shout out, Jacob. I see you on that. I'm starting to do more Jack Sawinski, even though I'm a notorious hater of Sawinski. I've been taking more of him. And then he takes Josh Naylor. Oh, there goes our stack. We should have uh, We should have reached. Should have reached. Dude. It's weird that you're the Pirates guy, but I'm the Jack Swinski guy. I'm coming around on it. <clears throat> like, remember last year how much I played Jack Swinski versus you? Yeah, I never did. Never. Yeah, you were you were uh, too close to the Flames. That's what you were. He, just watching him is just like so not fun. If you ever take if you if you draft him in a daily, just don't watch him play. <laughs> He's yeah. not in the home run. He's He's just watching fastballs down the middle <laughs> for strikes one through three. Oh, man. You like Louis Varlin, don't you? Yeah, I do like Louis Varlin. I've talked about Louis Varlin in the past there. I, I am. Uh, I like him. The other one. Oh, here. I want to ask you about this one. I was thinking about some names the other day that weren't getting drafted. I was thinking about Chris Paddock because I was watching Paddock start and thinking about him as like the year that he was with uh, San Diego there and was like a fifth or sixth round pick. He was like everybody's darling in the same way that uh, Anthony Desclafani was everybody's darling that one year. You know what I mean? Like it was like, oh, yo, the stuff plus loves him and blah, blah, blah. And everybody fell for the same effing trap. I was thinking like, can we run that one back this year? Like good park, probably steady in that rotation. Like why does Bailey Ober go so much higher than him? I don't know. Innings are probably the concern, right? Yeah. Oh that's, shit, we're on that's the clock. Just the beginning. Yeah, that's fair. Um man, JD Martinez would fit. Anyways, uh Jimenez stacks would probably need pitcher. I guess I like Gumby over this tier, like a lot actually. I I, I think I'd go Gumby here. Jordan yeah. Montgomery for the uninitiated. <laughs> I like that. One okay. What? Sorry, I lost my train of thought there, but I had I had a decent point. We were talking about um, we were talking about Paddock, but then there was someone else I wanted to uh, relate it to. Undrafted pitchers. Oh, JP France. Oh, you love JP France, dude. Like I thought, JP France was like pretty nice last year. He doesn't necessarily have a rotation spot right now, but like. He could out pitch Blanco, I think, and maybe grab that fifth rotation spot. That's assuming that he's healthy right now. Like I know he he was injured, so yeah, I don't know what like thing. yeah shoulder scary. Both him and Luis Garcia. He got some good results last year. Not not much in the K department, but. He kept a sub four ERA for the season. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the injury things. Why? Yeah, that's true. Julian is right. The The K upside is, is not, is not there. That is the issue with him. He's definitely, I put him in a bucket of like when he's on a daily slate, <laughs> right? I mm-hmm. avoid teams facing him. Like, because I think he can <laughs> yeah. limit, offensive output but it doesn't make him a good pitcher to roster it's just someone to be mindful of in dailies like i put brian bayo in that same bucket okay i respect it 
Yeah, just just um, be aware of their game. You don't have to take them on your team, though. Matt, are we going back? At Dog Run Chill asked, are we going back to the CJ Crone? Well, I mean, I played him so effing much last year. I clicked his name a lot in the Dinger stuff last year. He he has he signed yet? He was a he did sign today. And then, so he's with the Red Sox. Is that what I saw? Yeah. Not bad. Can't you see CJ Crone pulling a couple over that monster? Here comes the laziest take in the world. What if this year's Adam Duvall is CJ Crone? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's not crazy. Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of into um, Bailey Ober. Okay. So you Chuma's got me on him. Okay. You like who, who do you like? You like Fought more? Over? I take fought all the time, but we could take we could take Bailey over. Charlie Morton, you you had a good Charlie Morton shout the other day. Like I, I don't know, he's gonna. I like him still in that park. Yeah, I like him. Just just new flavor of the week is uh, is Bailey over for me. Mm-hmm. Where like I was way off him for a while and not even like really on purpose. It just like kind of bored me, and then I looked under the hood and I'm like, all right, this guy might be a pretty good pitcher. So starting to starting mm-hmm. to add him into the arsenal. Fair enough. So this, well, why can't Red Sox, man. Sorry, good. Yeah, why can't he play first base? Well, Julian said he can't play first day Cost first base in so what? Yoshida like the... DHs. Yoshida got... can play right field. He certainly can. Yoshida can play right field. He can DH. Story plays short. And then that he loses DH at bats there. I think they wanted to get story more DH at bats. Like he's clearly like at most uh like a hits fifth or sixth four times a week guy. Like yeah. without an injury. I, I, Julian, in Julian has it, right? It's just like when, when a lefty's at Fenway, like just load the hell up. Right. Just load up. I'm a I'm a sucker for uh for my platoon splits like that is like a major part of my process and probably to a bit of a fault where like I, I maybe avoid some good hitters because they have right on right, left on left matchups. Cause I just so strongly prefer my platoon splits when I play dailies. Like that is like such a huge part of my process. I don't know if that's maybe uh, a, a fault though. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, it's, it can, it can be a fault if, you don't do it correctly and you just assume all lefties are better against righties and all righties are better against lefties. But when you know your splits and you True. know that Patrick wisdom turns into Mike trout light versus lefties, <laughs> then playing the shit out of Patrick wisdom when nobody else is taking him is double bubble leverage. Like, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's, I gotta True. be, yeah, I gotta look up on more of my reverse splits. I always forget that until the until the year comes around. Uh, Aaron Judge, your one zero one of reverse splits, guys. Yeah, actually not go. better against lefties. Um, yeah, Grill saying like uh, uh, Yoshida has no arm. I mean, Marcelo Zuno has no arm and he plays left field every single day, right? So, I mean, not anymore. He now that you know Kelnick's there, but he did for a long time. So, like, there are guys that can play with no arms in the outfield. I mean, maybe Yoshida's better suited in left, and then you don't need an arm with the short wall, right? Uh, we're back on the clock here, Nez. We could do... Man, I think Carlos Correa is still mispriced. Uh, Key Brian Hayes is homer twice. What well, J.D. Martinez? We kind of need outfield here. I rarely take him. Some rumors of San Diego pairs well with Machado. Yeah, yeah, I would do Hayes. Okay. All right, let's do Hayes. Fine. I would do Hayes. I'm really – dude, J.D. Martinez, I am really, really concerned about. Okay. Nobody, like – nobody really has room for him. Everybody kind of yeah. has a, a bench set up for DH, and it like, it's like, wow, what does he really add by, like – cementing him as your right-handed dh maybe more than like i'm giving credit for but like mm-hmm. when you have like your your backup catcher and like a lot of these teams have you know catching catchers that can play dh as well it's just like i struggle to find his fit 
I don't know. That's fair. Okay, let me think. Let me, let me think of a team because he has to go to like a contending team, right? Like he has to go. Does to a he? Team At this that... point, he's got to go to a team that wants to pay him money. Yeah. But like, why would a stink? Why would a shitty team sign him? Also, like that. That's what like makes it even harder. Right. It's like, what is your leverage? Right. Well, who would you rather have, JD Martinez or Justin Turner? Like, if you were Toronto, probably like they, Turner because he signed... can actually play the field. That's fair. Right? Like yeah. he can. Right? He can still play like either corner if needed. Yeah, I wonder what ro- roster resource expects from that. They'll probably have him at DH right now and just kind of like put him in for um, the the Brandon Belt being gone. Who would you rather have right now, Brandon Gage Belt or JD Martinez? I, I see that makes me think like Brandon Belt, just because you he's at a least, lefty. At least he's left-handed. Yeah. Uh, I, I think JD Gage. Martinez over over uh, Justin Turner uh, after closer consideration. Yeah, the thing is, like, can Turner still play the field is, like, the big question he, mark. He did not a lot. Like, he played DH. He was a DH 98 right. times last season. Right, but my point being they had Raphael Devers, right? You, you Toronto okay. does not have Matt Chapman. So, like, he, him playing DH is, is that causation or correlation when you right, think about right. the fact that they have Devers. Like, there, maybe he can still play a manageable third base. I don't know. It's a good point. Back on the clock here, Nez. Uh, Joey Manessis was everybody's darling last year, falling like a rock here. Um, Wu, I like Wu. Uh, I like Bryce Miller. I like Miller more than Wu. You like Miller more than Wu? I'm a little okay. surprised that Wu was going ahead of Bryce Miller. And do you like them better than Sal Freelich? I love Sal Freelich. <laughs> Okay, let's but, take let's take Bryce Miller. But we've got other outfield options. I take the same three outfielders to finish my draft every single time, <laughs> every single and time. You're gonna, and you're going to make me take them on this one. <laughs> you have a vacancy for three strong projecting outfielders if you want them. Yeah, we got four picks left here, and I think I think three of them are going to be outfield because we we have you know. Jordan and Nolan Jones, we spent some high capital there, but then we got, you know, question marks with both or with Jordan in particular health wise. I mean, you got to draft like you're right, but, um, you know, Morell and, and McCormick are high ceiling potential guys, but they're not necessarily like high AB guys or potentially could, you know, I don't think they do the up down thing from the minors with Morell this year again, but yeah, it's not completely so. off the table. I would be shocked. I would be shocked. It's like, yeah. what are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you, what at this right. point, like literally, what are you doing? He showed enough last year. Showed a lot. And he showed a lot the year before too, and they still didn't keep him up. Non-zero chance, right? They're going to try him at third base, but. He's going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's. That's going to be funny. <laughs> uh, someone asked in the chat earlier, I think it was John. Where was it? John C. Here. This is a good one to go back to right now. Thoughts on guys like DeGrom or Scherzer in the 20th round, your seventh or eighth pitcher. Their ADPs were way, way higher earlier in draft season. Um, now that we've kind of like found out a little bit more in terms of timeline, I'm an absolute zero on DeGrom. And in terms of like Robbie Ray and Scherzer, you could maybe, maybe, maybe tell me once in a blue moon that you might sprinkle them in in the last round. But I think it's way too shallow a format to consider. I, I don't think, I, I think Scherzer's resting up for a playoff run for a team that just won the World Series that could win the World Series again in the end there. And I think Robbie Ray from the, the TJ, I'd throw Robbie Ray in this same group. Maybe he doesn't even belong in this same group. Uh, I mean, they're going to be like ramp it up after the All Star Game break, guys. I think they play this season. Um, okay. So, but if if we're taking bets on who can have a two start week, I'm not placing my chips on guys coming off these strong injuries. I doubt right. they're going to pitch show. every five days. 
Um, we're back on the clock here. Nez Austin Hayes back to us. Your boy Kyle uh Harrison. I like Nick Lodolo more and Braxton Garrett more. Um, that could be our last pitcher. Yeah, or I would do, do like one of those Hayes? pitchers. Do a pitcher that you like, in my opinion. Hayes Let's do Lodolo. Uh Hayes is 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 a fine pick. Um but yeah. there are so many young players in Baltimore that like if he's not on the top of his game, I, I I fear that he could lose some playing time. I say this and then immediately backtrack like for so many different guys. I think that can really be the case for Hayes. I don't know. The, the saving grace to Hayes is the glove is good. Like the glove is it his the glove scores well in center. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, could you platoon him and Mullins? Absolutely. But um yeah. That I think that would be like my only pushback, but I definitely, I definitely see it that like we get into like this, we get into this range of the, the draft and everybody's picking from the same little pocket of players. And like, you know, put, putting full case, bear case on the ones in the player pool to scroll the F down and find somebody else. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. When it's like Austin Hayes or, you know, even Bretton Doyle putting on 20 pounds or, or Henry Davis who homered the other night or what a miss by the MLB there. I don't know if you saw one of those tweets that I retweeted there, but what a miss not having that pirates game on like MLB network or something. Yeah. Like I that went off versus, about that versus Baltimore. Oh, I didn't see your tweets on it. Oh, or it was like, um, yeah. just like on the, uh, in, in the uh, members only stuff. I was like, Oh, saying yeah. how how stupid it was to like miss out on the number one prospect in baseball facing the number one pitching prospect in baseball who was just the number one overall pick, and you're right. not going to televise that. Like, find Dude, a way. Find and a not way. even tell and not even televise it on regional broadcast. Like, like I, I mean, like put that shit on MLB Network and hype it up for a week straight. But like, no stat cast. Oh God. Like, are yeah, you? Yeah, it's bad. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah, bad. They, they need us in the marketing department, Nez. We can make baseball cool again. Baseball's not boring. Just move it somewhere. <laughs> Just move it somewhere else. Like, right. Simple. Yeah, no, I, uh, that, and then you layer on there, there was like that narrative of like number one hitting prospect versus number one pitching prospect two years apart. There was also the number one pick from the two previous years in that game, too. With Henry Davis and Adley Rutschman as well. Yeah. Like, and then and then Davis hits a three round tank off <laughs> off Burns and like all we have Burns. are like Yeah. It's crazy. And and there, there you go. Former Cy Young on the mound versus number one prospects. Like that's what people are looking for, right? Generally Burns won that Cy Young one year, right? <laughs> generally. Um Okay, I think we got to shut it down and we got to go outfield only here. Is this is this officially uh, Henry Davis time? Yes. Okay. So you think he's going to play every single day between catcher and DH? Or right field. You think he'll play the outfield for real? Mm-hmm. I think I think they're going to give him some time in the outfield. He's going like I I don't see how he's not like forcing their hand as as a hitter. Like he's such a such a good hitter. And my hot take that like my Pirates friends don't agree with is like the Andrew McCutcheon signing just like didn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. It's a um, it's a hat tip. It's a hat tip. It's a it's a you came back last year. You got your two thousand hits. You did all that sort of thing. And now he's one home run away from 300. There you go. So they want it to be done in Pittsburgh, but like it's it kind of log jams DH, and like Henry's gonna Davis is gonna catch a ton, but his bat is so good that you got to find a way to get him in there more often. And I think you do that. You try to time his catching uh, games uh, that where the next day off he can be in a right field against a lefty, um, something like that. He's gonna. He's gonna play a lot. I, I I'm such a strong is believer he, in the in the hit tool. Like that that's where is I he a out. good catcher. No. Right. But like but no no, I, yeah, it's just I think it matters sometimes in, in so, evaluating like because like you know who's a really good defensive catcher? Grandal. Like the, the, one of the quotes that Shelton said about Grandal is that like he's not going to catch a hundred games. 
Okay. Well, there you go. I would hope not. When you spend a first overall pick on a catcher. Right. He's, oh, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's at the league. I would hope you let that kid catch. Yeah. On, in a season where you guys clearly are not competing for a World Series, this should uh-huh. be a big year for Davis to develop as a catcher. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. But the upside for Davis, I don't – like if – I shouldn't have to like have to – and I'm not saying that you are asking me to make the upside case for Henry Davis, but for me it's very obvious that his ceiling is pretty high. Right. What's the difference in taking him and Wyatt Langford right now? Mm, I think Langford's a better hitter. Okay. But I think I, I fully believe in the in the Henry Davis hit tool. Fully believe. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I like it. I mean, yeah, better lineup for Lang or for Langford and stuff like that. But it, I I think it's closer than ADP indicates. Is all the that's all I was kind of getting. D- at. Davis has legitimate like thirty home run upside. That's fair. Legitimate. The power is the power's so real. Who was it last year that uh, played catcher for them that was like young as well? Jason DeLay? Mm, right. Yeah. Or, or no, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Andy Rodriguez. No? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Andy. Yeah. That's who it was. Yeah. He, he uh, had Tommy John. But. Uh, depending on what happens this season, they, they said that he could come back as a hitter, but like McCutcheon is a DH, like you don't roster two DHs and platoon them. That's mm-hmm. not what you do. But uh, I'm a believer in, in Davis's uh, or Andy's uh, hit tool, and he's and he's actually a really good catcher. Sorry, I. No one like I, for me. You, you, you know, I just draft Matt Walner, but I think he's already gone. He is gone. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Damn. Yeah, let's take Velasco. We weren't paying attention, and it's probably a bad thing to do in a hundred dollar draft. But <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about uh, Dominguez, the Martian? They they're very very confident he's going to return this season at some point. Yeah, I just don't think there's enough at bats for him, even if he does return. Like maybe you make like a September and a and a late push with him. Like obviously he can flat out hit bombs, and that stadium's going to be amazing for him. And he's probably already their second best defensive outfielder because like Soto's not amazing in the field anymore. Judge is good, and Judge is and he center, can't play but, outfield like, this year either, but. Right. There you go. So then that even further limits. See, actually, I didn't know that he couldn't even play outfield this year. I thought if he came back, he'd be like ready. And then Grisham's like really good in the outfield. I don't know. Like you have to keep, you have to keep someone for defensive purposes and Stanton, although not a beacon of health, probably can't. Yeah. I mean, he, you can't play the outfield, right? So he has to play DH and, it's like, where are the at-bats going to come? Like Now, at-bats naturally come over the course of the season with injuries and whatever else happens. But I, I just for him, it's really hard for me to paint bull case narrative for this year, but I could do it for next year. Yeah, that's fair. All right, last pick. Trying- what are you, are you going to go outfield here? I think we have to, yeah. I think we're too thin. What do you want to do? Do you want to uh- go fun or like floor? Because Dylan Cruz is getting talked that he might make opening day roster. Do you like that more than stacking one of the Colorado guys with Jones? Kind of. I don't think you have to stack Nolan Jones, personally. Let's shoot the moon. You think Dylan Cruz makes the opening day roster? It won't be long until he's up if he if he doesn't. Right. Yeah, I don't love this team, but it's kind of of fun, I guess. That's why you had to add the fun factor. Now you can say you have a hundred dollar bet on Dylan Cruz, and uh, well, we we kind of had some uh, we had some fun factor until those last three outfielders. We did have some fun factor because there's a lot of guys I like on this team, and there's a lot of fun guys. They just aren't like extreme wild card guys, and we added three extreme wild card might be zeros guys. With the last three picks. All I'm going to say is I like building my teams how you just did. I love 
I like finishing it more my outfield um, at the end. Yeah, I like it more. I like kind of what we did. I would, if this was in the dinger, I'd much prefer it. But in an, a thousand person or a thousand entry contest, where four advance and stuff like that, I think you can be a little more concerted in the the late bets that they don't have to be like absolute ceiling shooters. They just have to be like, don't be zeros in the finals, guys. And yeah, sure. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, after this closes, can we take a look at our, our buddy J Max team? It looked like he had a pretty interesting distribution. I just want to see what he ended up with. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Um, uh, actually, it's probably better to look at like this. Yeah. Yeah, J Mac went oh, eight, six, at eight, six, six, okay. six, which was the old school meta. The old school meta of the OG, uh, the OG days there. Interesting because like he was rapid picking, so I wonder if he was stacking or queuing. Like you know, mm-hmm. he might have ended up with some accidental stacks, but I know he was probably drafting and then stacking because he's got the two Minnesota there, then he's got the New York one with uh, Torres and really early Manton. Chris Bryant pick. Couple spots of ADP there, like almost 18 spots of ADP. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna get ahead on a Colorado guy, dude, did you see his home run he hit the other day? Who? Chris Bryant. No. Okay. Well, like you know how the narrative on Chris Bryant has been like, um, it's low key been Vlad esque without like the pull side pop. So it's like everything's pull side and everything's like just like straight over the third baseman's head all line drives are batted into the ground. Like he's got no lift anymore. It's kind of like been like the narrative on him. Mm -hmm. He lifts like this, like it should have been a 200 and not maybe like 285 foot fly ball. (laughs) And it's just the classic, uh, the where Colorado and diamondbacks play their spring training Uh games. They get all these wind blown, uh, like, you know, pop flies that turn into home runs and it goes into the bullpen and it was just like oh yeah that's not leaving any yard even colorado like that's <laughs> oh, okay i won't get it too excited then uh, oh there you go jacob saying that J Mac goes eight pitchers all the time from what he's seen yeah, yeah so maybe he has, has positional limits, limits on and he's just building the eight six sixes because he auto drafts like the majority of everything and but he thinks he's got a really big edge in these contests and the and the PGA ones. So power to him. Um, EK saying double. What well, was it? Double Detroit for J Max team. There? Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. I've been I've been preaching as well. Canta and the Jack Flaherty. You like that one? I do. Oh, a lot he's of got both of those guys. He's got Scooball on it as well. Oh wow. Okay, I don't know how to do three. However, well, let's see uh, that if you want to put the condom on it to try and score yourself a two start week in the finals. I mean, maybe Maeda and Flaherty and Scooble aren't exactly the beacon of health of three guys to pair together. But if you're looking for the finals at San Diego and at Oakland, if you're playing for that finals week, that last week of the finals, those are some pretty good ballparks to pitch in. Yeah, I like I, I like uh, Maeda and Flaherty for being free and and largely undrafted. Mm-hmm. You got Angels at home, Boston at home, and then at San Diego at Oakland for the finals. That's that's pretty that's, damn that's good. Not, yeah, that's not bad for some Detroit arms if they could stay healthy that long. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> got prices. Hoping hoping God I say is the guy you need this year. That's you know, what you alluded to. If you please tell us in the comments, even if it's like after we sign off, please tell us what you're sitting at Kodai Senga exposure right now. I, yeah, it's got to be at least sixty percent. I jokingly said eighty nine percent, and I think that that's like a, a, a possibility. Yeah, uh, Jacob saying here that he lo- he Loki likes that Bueller won't be starting the season on the roster. I guess this is kind of like doubling back on the conversation that we just had about um, yeah. uh, why am I blanking on the names? DeGrom and Scherzer and, and Robbie Ray. I think Bueller's a little bit more interesting just in terms of the fact that like he's, he at least has the leash to go like, you know, 120 ish. Those other guys won't even sniff that. 
do I want Walker Bueller? Like if, if we're playing, if Walker Bueller is in a six man rotation and Kershaw's healthy and Yamamoto's there and Glasnow's still healthy, they're in a six man rotation in the middle of like August, let's call it. Where is Bueller going in terms of like Dodgers ranking of pitcher? Like, in terms of the Dodgers themselves or, like, an ADP? Well, I, I was thinking more like I was going to relate it to the daily. Like, he's, he's like, what, their four starter at that point? And then, you know, he he doesn't wind up, unless it falls perfectly, probably doesn't wind up being, like, a two-start guy in finals. And in dailies, he's probably, like, the sixth, seventh, eighth pitcher off the board on a given slate if we have a full slate. Am I not giving him enough credit to? I, I, I think he's going to be fine when he returns. It's just like, what the hell are they going to do with their rotation? Because it's like five and a half to six dudes there. Um, I still like his stuff. Like, I don't know what's what's really changed with this with him as a pitcher. It's just um, how how many is, is he ever going to have a two start week ever? No, in, in, in best ball. You know, probably not, probably not. So that's unfortunately like a a huge part of the equation when drafting pitchers is like, that is something that you simply can't project for. Mm -hmm. You need, you you need a little luck there. Um, So, you know, try to get as lucky as possible. And that's not a good way to do that. Yeah. Cool. Oh, we got a, Ooh, Candelario in 40% of drafts. I mean, they signed him. We've talked about how there's like a log jam in, but there's a log jam for the Reds for playing time right now. I, yeah, I don't know. That was such a weird signing. It was, wasn't it? I don't know. Kind of felt like they just like roadblocked their own guys. Jacob saying he's advancing uh, 50% right now. I mean, this is an interesting conversation, but we'll, we'll talk about it when it's all said and done, Jacob, because like it, 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 advance rates are so correlated to being densely dense ownership right and dense ownership early in the season like there's only been what three tournaments in the pga tournament thus far yeah there was definitely some edge though because like it's it's really interesting because you you accumulate points after every tournament and it's not just like top six players across that round six different players accumulate points every single tournament uh so there, there was some, uh, some edge to knowing who's going to play what tournaments and, and like how to, um, you know, stack up certain players mm-hmm. because other right, players are drafting like yeah, dead yeah. rosters. Uh, but I'm not discrediting that. I'm just saying the volatility and looking at advance rates after three games is like you, you can't look at that right now. Like for sure, gotta, yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah. yeah, yeah, good start for certain. Yeah. And this is definitely what th- what those rankings were geared towards were like specifically like the like the the mexico the mexico open that was right. the 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 crux of of the of that play but it was some yeah. good resources yeah i gotta be with jmac man i was just curious what he no, was no no i wasn't yeah mm-hmm. i wasn't trying to discredit yeah, just, in just, any regard just throw no, it out there done some shows with jmac i think he's a, i think he's a good guy yeah. cool 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 um let's have on it Nez. uh let's rank this team and then and then call it a weekend here and we will be back on monday for the good people um we went with a 7-6-7. Seven, seven. This is a perfect game. So advancing for uh, Dylan C. Slogan Gilbert. Shota, how do you say Shota's last name? Uh, Im- Imanaga. Imanaga? Oh, so like just like phonetically? I think uh, so. Gumby, Gumby over Bryce Miller, uh, Lodolo. That's kind of a fun staff. It's not how I traditionally build it, but there's there's some ceiling there. Uh, JRM, Jose Altuve, Manny Machado, Cody Bellinger, Dansby Swanson. He, Brian Hayes, clearly the strength of this team, yeah. IMO. And then Jordan Alvarez, Nolan Jones, Christopher Morrell, Chas McCormick, Henry David, Nelson Velasquez, Dylan Cruz. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> those last three picks scare the shit out of me, Nez. But they what should. do you say about this team? <laughs> this team rules, man. I love the pitching staff. You know, we shot the moon with Cease, but – Gilbert, I think, is a really nice mm-hmm. contrast to a Dylan Cease pick. Uh, I think Jordan Montgomery is also a nice contrast to a Dylan Cease pick as well. Um, it was over, too. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Those guys are pretty steady, Eddie. Um, and then some ceiling there with Cease, Shota, and Lodolo. Infield is loaded. Uh, and then I like the what, what we did at outfield, man. Like I, I love seven six seven when building my teams. Personally, I think this is the absolute move. You still capitalize on the early outfield meta without like, you know, digging your heels in too deep with players that really have very similar range of outcomes um, to guys that go rounds and rounds later. So th the field is adjusting. Mm -hmm. you, you can you can tell there's a lot more outfield available in the middle of the rounds. Okay, right, cool. Yeah, I think the Dylan Cruz one was like a fun, probably better off in a dinger pick. I think maybe stacking a Colorado guy there is what I would have done on yeah. my lonesome. But if Dylan Cruz is the guy you need, I am the guy you need in this contest. <laughs> he's not going to be taking a lot. I really don't think so. I mean, I would, I would venture to guess he's been taking like less than five times in the perfect game thus far. Yeah, and maybe rightfully so, or maybe he's Wyatt Lank for 2.0 with a huge discount. He's that is the range. Yeah, Telling that's you. the range of outcomes. Yeah, especially if he makes opening day. And now there's no guarantee he performs after said set point in time. But if he makes opening day, uh, a, pa a prospect with that pedigree could find his way into the middle of that order every single day. So yeah, him and James Wood, but we don't have James Wood yeah, in the player pool. We don't have James Wood in the player pool, but he is crushing in spring right now. And yeah. Love to see it. All right. Best of luck to everyone in the hoops streets this evening. Don't know if we got any news while we were on the show. Were you paying attention to that sort of thing, Nez? To the hit it real. Uh, Kelly Oubre game time decision doesn't drastically affect everything. Um, Brandon Miller got downgraded to probable. That's bizarre. So like, I hate that. He didn't have. Yeah. Like the fuck is that? for what reason? Yeah, uh, everything else was for Saturday. Grant Williams no longer on in the injury report, so you can scratch um, the Nick Richards guy Loki had that yeah. I was going to mix in like one time. All right, best of luck to you, everybody in the hoops tonight. Enjoy drafting the dingers and perfect games over the weekend. Make sure you get your solo shot in. I will be uh, making sure I get in there. Nez, we will be back on Monday. Anything you want to say? Yeah, I'll see you in the lobbies. Uh, best of luck. And yeah, let's try to get, get some solo shots filled. Yeah, let's do it. Maybe we'll fill ours on stream one time and not have a good lobby at all. <laughs> <laughs> but for the good of the community. All right, on behalf of Nez and myself, everybody's favorite time of the show, the end. Peace. Best of luck this weekend, friends.